Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? It's Mark Maloney here, the Hardy Books Podcast. As Danny Dyer would say, my bam hole's flapping a bit because I've got the big, bad, wicked devil Frenchman, the star of Danny Dyer's Britain's Deadliest Men, Stephen the Devil French. Stephen, you're very welcome to the podcast, mate. Uh, yeah, um, good evening. Yeah, yeah, right. You know what it is. It's Stephen French on the Hardy Books podcast. Yeah, right. I'm here with Martin Maloney. Yeah, right. He's one of the writers of a bunch of dead successful books called Hardy. Yeah, right. He also has his own YouTube TV show. Yeah, right. Where he cooks lots of brilliant dishes and recipes. Yeah, it's called Maloney's Digest. Thank you for having me on the podcast, yeah, guys. Pleasure to have you on, Steve. Um, yeah, just, no problem. You know, for the audience who aren't privy to Danny Dyer's Deadliest Men, which was a, a top Bravo series back in, I think, 2008, 2010, Danny met a lot of hard characters such as Mo Teague and some other fucking headers. Uh, but yeah, didn't matter. You took him for a ride in your BMW 730. Yeah, that's right. Would you consider that a workhorse? Would you not consider that a workhorse, yeah? When I first went to the car showroom and I needed to buy it, I said, do me a favour, mate. I need you to find something that's like a stallion. The guy went, don't worry about it. You're Stephen French. I've got a workhorse in the back. 7.30. I said, bloody hell. And uh, yeah, signed the papers that day. Paid with straight cash. Don't tell nobody about it. Yeah, right. Especially the tax man, which leads me into, why did you get the name the tax man? Yeah, because what I used to do, yeah, right, I used to tax drug dealers, yeah, right. I go to the house and I show up in different disguises, yeah, right. Sometimes I show up as a lady or I knock on the door and say, are you all right? And they go, who's that? And they go, it's me, the devil. What are you going to do about it? And they shit the pants, mate. It was all that stuff, you know. All that stuff was nefarious to who I am, basically, yeah, right. They call you the, the devil Frenchman. You know, why, why was this because of your ferocious reputation as a tax man? Well, to be honest with you, yeah, there's a short story what not many people know, and I'll tell you about it for free more, Maloney. Yeah, right? Are you listening? I'm listening. Got the headphones. Yeah, got, uh, get the headphones in tighter. Yeah, right? The headphones are in nice and tight, yeah. yeah. There was a man around Toxteth, Granby, where he was at, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the man, <laughs> the guy, yeah, right? He was originally the devil. Yeah, right? Was in the real, the real the devil? No, he was called the devil, just like I'm called the devil. Now, my sister Shirley, yeah, right, she's going around with this fella from Scotty Road called Dave, yeah, and Dave got into the bit of beef with this devil man, yeah, right, and so I had to go down and sort him out, and when I beat the shit out of them, they said, you know what, you're the new devil, yeah, right, you're the new devil, is that good enough? Tell me, when, when you defeated the original devil, did you lift up your head to the sky and let out a primeval roar? It's almost like you were there, mate. I feel like we're spirits combined, you know. You've got your kukuru, yeah, right? And I feel like it's connecting with my kukuru, yeah? yeah? But yeah, I did. I let my head back, right? I just threw it back like this. And it was like something, I'd say it was like the Lion King, but it's not. It's like the feeling the kids get when they first come back through the wardrobe in Narnia, yeah, right? Back to reality, yeah? And oh, there goes gravity, as Eminem would have said. I love Eminem's. Um, how was it, you know, your, your time being showcased on Britain's Deadliest Men with no other than Rabble Rouser and 23rd grandson of Richard III, Sir Daniel of Dyershire? <laughs> Daniel Dyershire, mate. Let me tell you right now, I had him and he was like putty in my hands. He was like putty in my hands and he let me mould him, yeah? Because I'm talking to this special little house of rented, yeah, to show him what I call sexual taxation, yeah, right? It's dark stuff, mate. You don't want to get into it. But let's just say we stayed in touch after that, yeah? I'm trying to get him to do a part two, but he's been a bit busy with the EastEnders and having a daughter who's also called Danny Dyer, just like him. It must get come quite confusing for the two Dyers. You know, um, having a daughter that has the same name as the dad. It's on th- um, in fairness, it's, 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 quite, it's a pioneering venture in terms of naming your offspring. Obviously, you make the right decisions in life, you know what I mean? Just like she makes the right decisions. Have you seen the advert she does? The Perthwood Surf? I haven't seen that. seen it? No, oh, it's mate. fucking brilliant, mate. Everything she's going around, right? Some, there's something like dirty, and she cleans it and all that. And then she's like, everything's all Perthwood Surf. It's fucking brilliant, mate. You should watch it on the YouTubes. She's using Surf the Ocean, is she? 
Fuck I was going to say safety over to our fucking enemy. Excuse you know what? Me. You're just you, you cracked onto something great there, right? Because <sighs> recently I also seen they've got more might links the audience. Speaking of the audience, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, that's like something purple hockey you'd be bringing up, man. Do you know what I mean? <sighs> I mean, we were going to touch on that subject soon enough. Just like he likes to touch on these subjects. But you know what? You speak about it if you want. What do you need to know? Well, we bring up the, the legend of Purple Aki. I mean, it, it all started when, from when I was a kid. There was Earlston Cemetery off Seaview Road. There was a green headstone that had no details. It just said Blanco Blackie. And apparently he was the source of the supernatural being known around Merseyside as Purple Aki. But then the lines got blurred somewhere. And we didn't know if it was a real man knocking about with a carrier bag telling lads to do push-ups and grabbing their muscles, or it's actually a supernatural being that could just appear out of like a purple mist at like midnight on a full moon kind of stuff. Well, to be honest Outside with you... New Brighton. No, it's a bit of both, mate. It's a bit of both. Legend, does it, that he does appear in the purple cloud of mist. You know what I mean? I was watching a video the other day. Apparently, he really gets off. He really gets off on the fear that people love of him. No lie, I've been told that in jail as well, he helps people with law. He's supposed to be a brilliant, smart, meticulated man. You know, but, um, you know, Aki, growing up in the area where I'm from, you know, he was a few years older. Yeah? He's six foot five, doesn't play around. He was the same height as Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn, is he that fellow who was in Psycho, the remake? I don't know, mate. I don't know. He actually was. I'll be honest with you. I've seen on video loads of times. He played Norman Bates in the remake of Psycho. I'll have to check the old not. Google page. Don't worry about the Google. <laughs> I checked it on the PlayStation 2 last night. But you can Google it if you want. He actually did play Vince Vaughn. Fair play to stay. Yeah, man. Tell me yeah. this. Uh, act, act as a side, mate. You know, what's your favourite? A shotty or a machiney? If you're going with guns, like... Yeah. Well, what you got to think about first, when it comes to something like this, it's crowd dispersal, yeah, right? Yeah. How many people can you get out of the way? Now, the shots of your close range, yeah, you're taking down three people. You're taking down three people. But let's say you've got 15 man them running for the hills, you pepper spray them with the machine gun, mate. You pepper spray them with the machine gun. So All day, every the day. Gun. All day, every day. And tomorrow. What's your favourite shotty? The 34 or the 45? Which one is the recipe for you? Oh, Jesus Christ. Probably 45 of the compaction shotguns. They're going to riddle me, yeah. There'll be nothing left to Stephen French, and I'll be glad, because I come from the soil, and I'll be glad to go back to the soil. And then just the circle of life has been completed then, hasn't it? Absolutely. Just like Jafar says in Aladdin, the circle of life. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did. But in, in terms of traditional board games, Ludo or Tiddlywinks? <sighs> Tiddlywinks. Well, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, we always thought Tiddlywinks had a more fun name. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of nicer on the ears, yeah. But also, yeah, it takes me back. It takes me back to when I was six years old and I was in Wilton Bul- Vale, yeah. I was in a boys' home. And they had a special celebrity guest come in. Guess who it was? It rhymes with Timmy Bavel. I won't say his name. It rhymes with Timmy Bavel. Right, I don't even want to go it, into who that lad is. Well, listen, don't worry about it. If you never heard the story, you can go on YouTube and look about Stephen French's connection with Timmy Bavel. Yeah. Jesus. It's real. The plot thickens, man. The plot thickens. It does. It's like gravy meat. Or it's like custard. But, you know, only if your mum makes it, you right. Yeah, because otherwise it can yeah. be prone to having lumpy bits that take the phone out lumpy of Lumpy bits. Yeah. Lumpy bits take the phone out of everything, mate. Especially if you get them in some of them. Uh... Anyway, yeah, moving on. So, so what, what are your favourite soap of all time? Uh, probably Redox. But I don't... Yeah, I knew... You know what? I had the feeling. I had the feeling you were talking about the TV shows. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. I represent the city of Liverpool, mate. What, what do you think it's going to be? It has to be Hollyoaks. drug side, mate. A oh, Hollyoaks. Oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't see that one coming. Steve, mate, you're throwing curveballs yeah. left, right and centre here. I've got another another question for you. What's your favourite yeah. type of dog? The Arley, the Pity 
or the Rotty. Can you, can you give us a little bit about each each dog? So, like, when you say the alley, you're talking about the Alsatian, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So the Alsatian, yeah, it came from a guy called Alan, yeah? He used to breed different types of these German Shepherd dogs. But he got a nickname as Alan the Sensational. So when it comes to giving a name to the type of dogs, you know, you have to do Alsatian, yeah, right? When it comes to the pit bull, believe it or not, yeah, that actually comes from the rapper pit bull. You know the rapper pit bull, he does the fantastic dance songs and he gets everyone dancing in the suits, yeah? yeah. His father, his, well, his father, yeah? You might know this, even though he's Cuban, he was actually from Ireland and raised Irish blue terriers, brought them to Cuba, made pit bulls. <laughs> wow. And what was the other dog? Of course. The Rotty. The, oh my God, don't even get me started, me. Because oh, you, you yourself have also claimed like these lads who were, you know, these two bit wrongins who were trying to dethrone you from your, your, your legacy as, as being in the big bad devil, wicked French tax man. Say it for me. Say it more. You know what it is, say it. Jack Russell's snapping at the heels of a Roth Wheeler. You're definitely Jack Russell's snapping at the heels of a Roth Wheeler. That's always been my MO, yeah? When I was 17, yeah, I was out in Turkey, and we all got, like, on a lash with the lads, and they said, you know what, get a tattoo on your ankle. I said, what shall I get? I say, don't be letting Jack Russell snap at this shit, yeah? yeah. But anyway, you were asking about the Roth Wheelers. I'll tell you about the Roth Wheelers. Yeah, yeah tell right? us about the Roth Wheelers, mate. I like to call them the dark chocolate disasters, yeah? Yeah. Because they've got that kind of dark chocolate texture, but they're ferocious, yeah? I had two of them. Are they like a Cabri's Bourneville of the dog world? They yeah. like the Cabri's Bourneville, yeah? But there's also this new Cabri's dark chocolate. If you're not onto it, you need to go into your local shop and support the shop and get them to fucking get those chocolate balls, yeah? But I had two of the rough wheelers, yeah? Yeah. And I called one of them Jimmy, and I called one of them Barry. Do you know why I called them that? After Barry Grant and Jimmy Corkill from Brookside. Yeah, that's my favourite soap ever made. Yeah. Forget what I said earlier. Do you know what, Steve? I mean, yeah. Brookside, since it was taken away from, from MTV, not music television, but Merseyside television, uh, the series that was, was devised by Phil Redmond, it was a real loss to popular culture in Liverpool. You know, it, it definitely tackled some you know, groundbreaking topics such as, you know, um, domestic abuse with the jaw dashes, um, you know, uh, a helicopter got shot down by a lad with a pistol and crashed into a petrol station and blew up towards the end of the series. Tinad O'Leary uh, dealing with not getting into the army because he was deaf and he called the doctor a mong. And oh I suppose one of the best ones was when... Outbreak, the movie featuring Dustin Hoffman and Morgan Freeman came out. Funny enough, a plot line in Brookside was there was an outbreak of a rare, deadly Ebola-like virus on Brookside close. And none of the main characters died, but there was a, a, a character who came in that was Bing Crosby's girlfriend who'd been in it for a few weeks. But she was like the only one who pretty much died from that. But, it, you know, Brookside, it... it did bring a lot of scope to Liverpool. I think it's 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 a tragedy that is it's gone, mate. Is there any is there any way like Stephen French could have a little word, go around masked up, a couple of shotties in the seven thirty workhorse, and just have a word with Phil Redmond? If even Phil Redmond's not allowed uh, alive, Barry Grant, who fucking t- turned out to be a busy and went down yeah. working in the bill, it's fucking unheard of, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean. Like, when it comes to stuff like that, it's not the hardest thing in the world for me to go and find Barry Grant. Do you know what I mean? He does karaoke in a few bars around town each night. And to be honest with you, it's not bad. He's like Sting, yeah? Yeah, He's yeah. just like Sting, but not when he was good, when he was a bit shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah right? Um, but to be honest with you, I'd happily, I'd happily do that for Brookside, yeah, right? Because in case you never noticed, yeah, Brookside was the first time we'd ever seen a black man with a chip shop, yeah? I'm talking about Michael Johnson. Mick Jono, yeah. Mick Jono. He had, yeah. The, he had the chip shop, mate. He was a workhorse himself. He was. Devilish. Devilish. And, and, with the salt, with the vinegar. He'd be shaking that shit all day, mate. Dribbless. 
Yeah, and, and also, I think, again, you, you know, you had things like Matt, Nat and Georgia, incest and on one side, but then you had like... That was the best. She was, she was quite a tasty article, was Georgia, as far as my 13-year-old brain remembers. But like, yeah, at the I was end of the day... about six. About, yeah. <laughs> no, actually, well, you know, 36, sorry. I've got yeah. how old I was again. What's my age again? I remember it's, the song. Yeah. But what yeah. about what about mixed steroid abuse, man? Do you know what I mean? He, he started getting well moody, and even Leo, his son, was getting a bit of getting a bit of jip off Mike, and yeah. then he just started, you know, I think Simbad had to come over and just have a word and just say, look, Mick, you, you changed, and, and and you're not the same, Mick Johnson. We remembered that, like working down a chippy, and you know, and it was as nearly yeah. as bad as little Jimmy Corkill. The time he was done in by smack dealers, and after. Uh, Jimmy Corkill ran over Ron Dicko's son after he was going, I need gear, I need gear, Jackie. Yeah. So these, you know, it's, there's, a, there's a massive Liverpool-shaped hole missing in the world of soap operas, man. You've got those ponces down there in EastEnders featuring Danny Dyer. In fairness, Danny yeah. Dyer, he's got, he's got kids, man. He knows what it's like. He knows the struggle. He's got to pay for private tuition. You know, he's got yeah, a gaff cool. there in Essex, you know, and he's in he his nice bell staff jackets and, and Rolex and watches. He's got to look the part, man. He's, he's got a gaze there, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's but a geese. He is, man. He is. Tell me this. Are you spiritual at all? And if so, was Bruce Lee a big influence on you? Okay. I'm going to address this in two ways. Yeah, right? yeah. With spirituality, yeah. I spent a long time in the um, Walton prison, yeah, right? Yeah. And it was there, I was dilly-dallying, I was gallivanting, I was going around the different guys, did I want to be a Muslim, did I want to be like, uh, did I want to be one of the white skinheads? Because they let people in, you know, you don't have to be white to be part of the white skinheads. Or somebody told me, I think they were trying to take me to get me in the showers. But anyway, this fella came to me, and his name was Jasper McPherson, yeah, right? Yeah. And he said, you know what, mate? I read your book, The Devil. It was brilliant. I said, fucking hell, mate, thank you very much. But then he said, have you read this book? And give me the Bible. Later that night, I went into my cell, read the Bible, went to the toilet after and accidentally pissed all over the place. When I got... <laughs> when I moved away from the toilet, yeah, right? I looked down and the puddle... <laughs> the, the puddle... <laughs> It was Jesus' face. It was Jesus' face. It's not a laughing matter. It's dead serious, right? The puddle was Jesus' face. Now, the other part was, did they get any of my inspiration from Bruce Lee? Of course I did, yeah. But you know where I really got the, uh, my inspiration from, yeah? Wesley Snipes' Play Trilogy. Almost the Wesley Snipes of the 70s, Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly. You know the black guy in Enter the Dragon. You know Enter the Dragon, is. I do, yeah. You he was, know who he is. Is he the one who went up against Chuck Norris? Uh, I don't know. He went up against someone Chinese in one of the films, yeah. In the martial arts film, he had to fight with someone Chinese. Was it the Chinese Grok who had massive muscles? Oh, my God. He was a fucking meter, didn't mate. He looks like he's had about six meter bits for breathy. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, uh, Bolo, his name. His, his name was something like Bolo. Yeah, I used to have all of them on video. Yeah. What about the What about the Blade trilogy? So the Blade trilogy. Yeah. Because my dad's girlfriend's still... son had Blade trilogy, and he had Bruce Lee, and he had all of them, and and he was especially proud of. He had the Wesley Snipes uh, yeah. replica sword as well, and was uh, yeah. adorned with with all the paraphernalia and the ribbons hanging off it. And, he was expecting a okay, bunch yeah. of no good vampires to burst through the window any second. Like so, thankfully no, that didn't happens. happen yet. But you never know. Maybe mate. fucking energy vampires. Yeah, right. Nice. <laughs> ah, so, mate. There's no no, no shortage of them, is there? Yeah, comedian I am, mate. Yeah, first comedian. Now you're asking me about the Blade trilogy, right? Mm -hmm. First of all, we're carrying on with the conversation of black martial artists here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You know, Wesley Snipes. He done a lot of the choreography for that film. I know me facts. I seen the extras on the DVD, yeah, right. But my favorite one out of them is easily Blade Three. Blade Three was the best. The others are shit. <laughs> and <coughs> <coughs> tell me this, Frenchie. What are the secrets to maintaining a personal discipline for true righteousness of the Warriors Code? Well, it's all about gathering, yeah. Yeah. You're gathering negative energy from one side, yeah. You're gathering positive energy from another side. When you put them together, 
Maybe go and picking up a couple of caramel frosted donuts from Sayers and just bringing them to your granny. Yeah, I mean, I used to do a funny thing back in the 80s. Is, yeah. is Sayers yeah. gone now, Frenchy, or is it now Greg's? Have they been, has there been an acquisition yeah. there? Yeah, so, well, you've got Greg's and you've got the, the Waterfields, I think it's called, yeah. I think you've got the Waterfields. I'm not too sure. But um, I used to do this thing yeah, in the 80s. I don't want I need to whisper a little bit here yeah, because my wife might hear about it. I'll go and get those place donuts here yeah, and see how many I could fit on me, Willie. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, don't you, man? I do. I do indeed. I two of them. Two. Yeah, right. Now, just for the, for the audience who, who are on, on watching this um, on, on the YouTube channel, I have to say that this wasn't really Stephen French. This was actually a favour from a very well-known famous actor who goes by the name Idris Elba. Oh, what's going on, man? Cheers for that, mate. Think it, yeah, I'm surprised to be on it, to be honest, but it's no matter. How's it going, Martin? It's good, mate, yeah. The acting world's a bit quiet at the moment, Idris. Uh, thanks for coming on. And, and I know you're a big fan of Stephen French. And, uh, nice. you know, you, 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 came to, you came to know about him from the Danny Dyer documentary, uh, Britain's Deadliest Men, by Bravo, 2008 to 2010. Yeah, man. Uh, I've seen it on, uh, I think I've seen it about three times. And then Danny gave me a phone call. He said, you know, I could put you in touch with Stephen French. He's a guy who thinks... You know, one of the people you acted with is based on him. Was, you know, it's a cow in, in the wire called Omar. So I decided I'll go on this podcast and see if I could set the record straight. And we did. So Omar from the wire is actually based on Stephen French. No, because that's what, he, that's what he thinks, yeah. But yeah. it's based on a real criminal from Baltimore. And he was asking me all about it, and I was like... You know, I felt a bit weird embarrassing him on the podcast. Sorry. And uh, on the podcast, you had um, your Purple Aki on the podcast as well, jumping in to, to help with... Uh, it was internet, surfing the internet on the PlayStation 2, was it? Yeah, man, he's a bit of a weird one. See, when I went on it, I never really heard of him before. It. I get on it and Stephen's like, listen, I need to tell you about this guy. He's a bit of a fanatic with muscles. So, yeah, it's not wrong. So now I'd like to touch him. So, right, let's meet him. I go in, he's a nice guy, sign his little netto bag, do whatever I could. Basically it. Well, as the old as the old rhyme went, N O T T O, Netto is the place to go. Definitely was the place to go, man. I think we'd be in a little bit of a better society if um the Asda on uh, Prescott Road was gone and we had that netto back. Yeah. What about the old, you know, you know, a, a little fact that not many people know that Netto is actually a Danish company. Uh, where's Danish? In uh, in Denmark, in the south. Denmark. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I might yeah. Have, might have done a DJ set there once before. Didn't really understand what they were saying, but it's a nice place. So yeah. how, how's work going? Is it good? Idris, it, it, you you you're busy nice. lately? Yeah. You had no. Corona there for a while, did you? Yeah, I had it for a little bit, and then I bounced back. Going to yeah. be starring in the new Suicide Squad because you know how great the last one was. Yeah, yeah going to be starring in that, and yeah, Hol- Harley Quinn movies, man. They were they they, oh, they, 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 they were movies. No nah, man, I watched The Godfather one night, then I watched that the next night, and then I just felt like my life was complete, man. I quite enjoyed your performance in Pacific Rim, Idris, and it had uh, Daniel Katzinski who played Zoe Slater's brother in in the, the Ginger Lad for. Extenders, he was also in it, fighting in these massive robots and great, great concept. Was, uh, oh, fighting like massive alien bad boys who were using some sort of transdimensional rift underneath the uh, Pacific yeah. Ocean, as far as I'm aware. Like, I don't really remember who you're talking about. To be honest, like, I remember I was in the movie. Um, yeah. There was a director. There was there was a producer. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I don't really remember. But, you know, I might check it out. I used to always watch the EastEnders. Loved it. Would you ever see yourself taking over the Vic after Danny Dyer has has moved on? Yeah, man. 
I could see myself getting a pub one day. Yeah. Would you be a f- sorry? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I'm I'm getting a bit too excited here. I, I was just wondering, are, are you a fan of Martin Kemp, uh, one half of Spando Ballet, who played Martin Owen in? In oh no, Steve Owen in EastEnders. Well, see, my thing is, I've came up as a Londoner who's, you know, just basically got to the top of his game by just acting, not trying yeah. to be anything else apart from the characters who've been playing. Yeah. But he's a guy who went from being in a little band of fannies to being a guy who's like pretending to be a hard man to not know whether he wants to be a fanny or a hard man anymore. Yeah. You know, consistency is key to success. Mm. So he, yeah. So he went from being a fanny, then he was a hard man in the Craze movie. Yeah, um, fanny, yeah. hard man, back to fanny. Yeah, a little bit of a dabble with the hard man. And where is he these days? He, he tried to do a, a Danny Dyer up in up in Liverpool. What happened there? Uh, this much is true. Um, he tried to do a little shit documentary, but he went, ended up walking around looking like Terminator nonce. Terminator nonce, yeah. and that's not a good yeah, look, you, mate. No, you got to see it, mate. Yeah, as you got to say, just imagine the Terminator was just like hanging around by a kid's playground or something. That's pretty much what those Kemp guys are like. Yeah, that's not good, man. I mean, this is in no by in no way are we accusing Martin Kemp of being a, a bacon bonds. No, no, bacon bonds, absolutely not, mate. Met him once before, didn't really get on with him, but didn't get none of those sort of shitty vibes. Is that right? Pay for dinner. On that note, I have to. For those listening, that wasn't really Idris Elba. You were probably thinking, fucking hell, man, how did Mark Maloney get Idris Elba on the podcast? <laughs> and Stephen French. I'm going to introduce yes. the, the legendary Kyle Cleghorn from Liverpool. Yeah. Kyle, thanks very much for coming on. And uh, oh, brilliant, man. You've just done fucking hell, like, half an hour of <laughs> solid impressions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that fucking was intense. Yeah. And it's funny because I, I, I discovered you about three years ago. On, yeah. Uh, on YouTube, the YouTube's look, on the YouTube, looking up Stephen French videos, and you, <laughs> but you've done a whole collection of fucking brilliant voiceovers. There was a there was a a drama, I think it was like 1999, called Shooters. Was it 99 that came out? This was like a real oh, hard yeah. drama. Yeah, yeah, early 2000s, 99, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't know you'd seen Shooters. Yeah, myself and Tordoff used to used to watch a lot of Liverpool stuff, and because his, his mum's from Bootle, for him he was always like we we're always making fun of. There was a scene where they, they they get a gun, these these young scallies, and they're like, "Look at that, mate! I'm not a bin lid off it, never eaten." Yeah, the shooting in the uh, the alley. Yeah, um, Uncle Capper as well. That was another one. For, well, it was buried. Was was another series? I think that was Stephen was it Stephen no. Graham. There's a thing called Buried on Channel 4 years ago as well, which um, no. a guy called Uncle Kappa, and he was called Kappa because he kept wearing Kappa yeah. tracksuits. Oh, my God. I've done another... Uh, did you see the newest shooters one I've done? I didn't get a chance to see it yet, but... but it, Do you it's, know what? Like, it might be better than the first one. Can we just take this opportunity as well for people who definitely check out your channel? It's a real hidden gem. You definitely have the strides to go into the fucking... Big time, fucking into the widow, mate. Into oh, our mate, to... you'll, you'll be living out, you'll be living out in Caldy with all the fucking <laughs> footy players who, who have to commute into Liverpool. The many-faced god on YouTube, and yeah, you yeah. Can find you on Twitter as is it Kyle the many-faced god? I think it's just the many-faced gods. Many-faced uh, god. Yeah, many-faced god. You'll find it. The listeners are diligent in the research. Yeah. One thing I do miss is is uh, Scouse humour because funny enough, like we I found you on No Context Scouse on Twitter, and I was like, ah, look who it is. <laughs> yeah, well, have you seen the? Um, have you like gone onto any of the other Scouse meme pages? Not, not yet, no. Oh, <laughs> there's a few. Like, I'll send you some of them. Um, the fucking unreal. Like these lads have all got like mad personalities and just make like the maddest, weirdest memes you've ever seen, all based around Scouse humour. But the no context one's boss as well. There's a great wit to like Scouse wit. There's uh, an old friend of mine, Louis Fitzgerald. Oh, sorry, Louis Fitzpatrick. Patrick Fitz Louis. <laughs> 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 uh, Louis Fitzpatrick. He was telling me years ago his dad had an allotment, and he said yeah. that there was two two neighbours on the allotment. They'd, they'd had a disagreement. They called it Chernobyl because of the fallout. <laughs> 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 Have you seen the one recently of um, this lad did the old like behind this wall, right? And you can hear the arguments in this person's house, and it's a girl coming home from work, kicking off, 
at a fella because he smoked the last spliff. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's unbelievable! That she's she's barely ready to kill him, and you, he's like, you can tell he's cowering. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's like, I've been in work all fucking day. I've come home. Have you smoked me last spliff? What's the story with weed in England now? Because I remember back in 2002, I went over with my mate Kinsler to, it was one of the worst fucking things. We, it was just, we were, I was working in, in Dublin at the time and he came down for the weekend. And I was like, should we get the boat over to Liverpool? Because my sister was living in yeah. Liverpool at the time. We went down to the port in Dublin and he said the boats had gone. So then we went and took a taxi to the airport and then bought tickets to Manchester Airport, flew in, took a train. And by the time we got into Liverpool, it was fucking like half, half 10. <laughs> Uh, oh, it was a fucking nightmare, man. Like we, we had we had Saturday night out. We went out on Sunday, and then Monday we went to Manchester. And, and he, he'd already been to Old Trafford before, but he wanted to go back again. Went mm. had a look around Old Trafford. It bored me because I was a Liverpool fan. Afterwards, we got caught on the tram, and he was walking off with the, all these lads in orange high vis jackets had nabbed me. So that was another mm. fine. I just I'd give like twenty quid, but then we end up missing the bus to the, to Manchester. <laughs> missed the flight. Had to get new tickets. I think the flight cost was like six hundred pound or something like that. that was ridiculous. What the fuck? Yeah, I would have so. stayed in Manchester. I know Manchester's all, all right to go out to. Do you know I've never been out in Manchester, believe it or not. Like I did once. Yeah, once. <laughs> <laughs> and like just off. That was all right. Yeah, you know what, Manchester fucking boss. I know. Mine's it's only half an hour up the road, like. I know. In Liverpool. Um, but what was you? What was you asking about weed for? Oh yeah, oh, that was right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, thanks for getting me fucking tangent master. <laughs> so at that time, the news had come out in England that they decriminalised weed. So I bought some weed when I was in Liverpool, and then I just skinned one up in yeah. Chester Airport. It was late at night. There was no one around me. We were in this like restaurant, and you could still smoke indoor. They hadn't put the smoking ban on yet. So I was just uh, yeah. sitting there smoking a spliff inside Manchester Airport. But looking back, I could have been arrested for it. <laughs> Yeah, man, people probably just thought you were bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nah, it's legal now, man. If someone had asked me, I, would have, I thought it was decriminalised. I mean, like, no, like, you can't smoke it in any bars or anything like that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know what it's like if you're walking down the street, but you get to a certain age anyway, and you're not really walking down the street with a spliff, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think if you get caught with a little bit, you're all right, do you know what I mean? It's weird because there was a place on Brick Lane I went to with my sister. I don't know why, we were on our way to, a, to a, meet some friends at Bowling Alley last December we're in London I'm walking down yeah. Brick Lane and there's just a little aged dude sitting there watching something on his phone it was all it was all like bongs and poppers and all this kind of gear papers she'd had a few drinks you'd say oh look at this lad he's lovely <laughs> all right so she, we went in and he just goes it is over there so we go around this doorway and around another side and then I'm trying to open this door and it's locked I'm like hello I don't even know what we were doing in there but then I look look at this hole in the wall and there's like two blue fingers that look like a house spider's fangs sticking out these like oh. thin silhouette covered like blue fingers guys <laughs> so I, was like, I, I was like how's it going man can we go in no it's locked I'm like alright well, what are we doing in here he's like I don't know we want to buy something mate and I'm like what are you selling weed I'm like how much is it for some weed and he goes what do you want 20 quid's worth and I'm like what's that like is that, is that an eighth or what yeah it's an eighth I'm like yeah and I said to my sister, do you want to buy any of this? Have you got cash on you? Do you want to buy weed? And she's like, no, not really. I was like, all right. But she was like going, oh, you're lovely. You are. He's <laughs> grabbing his oh. two fingers with this like little hole in the wall. Well, fucking hell. So uh, whatever like, the crack is there, people are just selling it out with little hatches and, you know. Well, I was on um, <coughs> South Road in Crosby the other night. And it was on a Wednesday as well, right? So there's just like loads of fucking kids in these little shitty bars and what they do they turn like the shops into a bar so think of a little tiny shop they just go you know what here's a couch here's some fucking disco lights it's a bar no um, license or nothing <laughs> fucking probably not lad but uh, there's loads of kids and I'm already feeling old anyway it's on a work night out and then some woman who's about 60 she's like you know right lads she's like do you know anyone who's going to have what's anywhere lads and I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to go over to my mates now. But she was like almost 60 years old, on her own, fucked up, like a jaw was swinging. Yeah. Asking people for tablets in a little box room on South Road on a Wednesday night. Wow. Yeah. I haven't been out in Liverpool since probably 2009. I don't know, 2010 was the last time. It was when we were doing the Hardy Books and my, my, my sister and brother-in-law still lived there and they moved back. So like... Yeah, I haven't been there for ages, but I wouldn't mind coming over because obviously I have, I have family still in the area. Like, and 
be nice to yeah. come back and go down, you know, to go down the log. Oh, See the lads now. Oh, like, it still smells of fucking Bobby <laughs> piss. <laughs> is, is Peacock still open? Because that place opened up and there was lads going there on a Saturday night wearing top man suits. Oh, man, that, well, I wouldn't have suits, but yeah, I, that was me, lad. <laughs> top man suit, you know what I mean? Standing on Saturday night, like, yeah, they'll have a little pizza in there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I used to like Peacock still, you know. Yeah, it was good. It was a nice, nice spot. That, you, you like, like, you were down a side suit, weren't you? So you felt like you were a little bit out of town. You weren't right in the midst of the bullshit that is Concert Square. Yeah. You have like that down under the, the Aussie bar and then there was like, how oh, was it? Yeah, oh, yeah uh, no, it's not called down under. Wasn't okay. there an Eden there as well? Well, the thing is... Like, walkabout, was that the name of it? Walkabout's there, yeah. yeah so the it, walkabout yeah. and the Lloyd's bar have always been there, but then everything else changes all the time. Like, yeah, because like, there's... always getting closed down now. Yeah, I don't Yeah, I don't know why it is. It's probably because there's a lot of, there's a lot of Jack and Jill's on the go or... But it's always like funky house, mate. Let's go and listen to some funky house. And then you had the crazy house as well. It was like a three story. Is that still open? Is it? Yeah. Do you know what? I feel like it's closed recently, you know. Yeah. I'm sure it's the, but someone will like find a way to bring it back because that yeah. was like a big deal for a lot of people, you know what I mean? I went like in crazy house that much myself, but for loads of scouts, we went there. Did you ever go into the Jacaranda for a few pints? Uh, where about was it? A bit that's, further up on the same road. Yeah, so it's off Seal Street, in between Seal Street and I don't know if it's Bowl Street, but it's like if you go down Seal Street past Barfly, and it's across some place called the Marlboro Pub, I think, as well, which is like an old. I've probably been in it loads, and I know the name, obviously, because it is one of the most famous pubs. I just can't remember what one it is. <laughs> well, when you hear this, back in 2006, I was, I was in there one night with my dad. And we just finished work and we'd had no dinner. My dad was like, they had a deal on bottles of Stella. So my dad was yeah. buying like two bottles. Every time he went, he was, get, he was getting us two each. Yeah. I just wasn't feeling it. He was like, hey, go on, son, get up, hey, do a song, will you? Hey, go, go on. I said, dad, I'm not feeling it, mate. <laughs> you know, and he's like, uh, yeah, just do a fucking song, son. Hey, the song you sing, the, the, the Dead Flowers one. Look, I'm not feeling it. So uh, he goes, all right, I respect your decision. And then about half an hour later, it was like, and next up, please welcome to the stage, Martin Maloney. <laughs> I'm like, fuck sake, Dad. I'm even worse off at this stage. So I get up and there's no monitors and I couldn't hear myself singing. And then obviously this was embarrassing me, Dad, in front of a packed pub. Like oh he was God. the one who was embarrassed. And then in the middle, I'm trying to sing and I was, it wasn't really that loud. And he, he just gets up in front of the whole fucking crowd and goes, hey, would you just sing the fucking song, son? <laughs> And you can hear everyone mumbling, going, what, what's going on here? And then I just said over to the mic, I went, cheers, Dad. You fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good memories, yeah. good memories. Yeah, Scousers, are, Scousers would have loved that shit. Yeah. I, I, do, yeah. Did you ever hear a place called Chaplin's Bar on Lodge Lane? A bit, of it, but I haven't been there. Oh, mate, it's one of these places that has, like, shutters on the windows my dad goes to me one Saturday night. He's like, I mean, I mean, going to, I mean, going to a loveliest pub. I found the, the loveliest place you would ever, ever imagine. And I was like, yeah, you have. Where have you been? I heard that he went down to Lodge Lane and he went into Chaplin's Bar. Yeah. So we jump into a cab at about, I suppose, half ten on a Saturday night. I thought we were going to go into town and do something a bit more fun. So sure enough, the cab pulls up outside Chaplin's on Lodge Lane. I was like, oh, oh fuck's sake, I can't believe you're bringing me here. Uh, give it a go, son. Give it a go. So we went in, there was a karaoke on. He was like, hey, get up and do a song. Do, do the fucking... Oh, my God. You waste a song, son. You waste a song. <laughs> so because I was so pissed off, he lured me there. I got up and I sang Don't Look Back in Anger, but I did it as arrogantly as oh, possibly God. could. And it turned out everyone <laughs> thought it was great. And they were like, oh, mate, that was fucking boss. That was me. Is this your oh, dad? Man. Oh, they me. Put some lemo in the toilet, lad. <laughs> Some lemon. Yeah, have a little. Yeah, have a lie, lad. <laughs> have a bit of beef. <laughs> yeah, where are you from, lad? Island, yeah. Fucking hell, sir, lad. Ah, oh, they lad. Liverpool's a fucking mad spot, man. It really is. Can't believe I haven't been back sooner. How was it for the winning of the Premiership? Was was there much crack around town? Uh, yeah, well, outside Anfield first, it was like everyone went up. And I think it was like when the last game happened or I don't know, but either way, loads of people were at the ground. So that was a big fucking celebration there. Yeah. But then a few nights later at the docks, loads of people gathered. Police were like, we advise you to not come, but nah. we're not going to fucking stop you. And then um, some lads 
fire the firework at the uh, live building. Yeah. And this young Evertonian fan started getting the blame online. And oh, yeah. everyone was shared in it. Yeah, yeah. This lad, he went even there, you know what I mean? And so it all starts getting shared online. But then, like, they found the real lad and, like, he never got arrested. He just had to go to court and fucking probably do a little bit of community service and that, you know what I mean? Maybe Give French. Give back to the fucking roots. <laughs> Maybe French, you might bring him around on, like, a, you know, like an anti-crime <laughs> thing. Oh, you don't, don't go throwing fireworks. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a sport lit. Things <laughs> like yeah, Put it in the bucket. Who was the man he was talking about? Johnson. The, the, the oh. st- <coughs> Graham Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, that, that documentary was like, Stephen French, oh. he's a reformed character now. He's actually taken a lad out of a community outreach project. Yeah, right. Come to the uh, cemetery, yeah. Because you don't know until one of your crew's been killed. And once your crew was gone, all you can do is do what I did and get your mate a 10 grand tomb and just walks off. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's wearing the white tracky as well. The white yeah. tracky. I always wear a suit, Danny. I always wear a suit. Some some yeah. legend has cut together the best of Danny Dyer and Stephen French on YouTube. It's one of my it's one of my favourite bits yeah. of internet lore, man. You were saying that your ambition is to do a podcast with Stephen French as Stephen French. As Stephen French. You know what? I reckon I could make it happen one day. Yeah. Um, Where is he I these days? The way... What's he up to? So... He's still active on Facebook, I think. Doesn't he do those Sunday sermons or something? Nah, and here's here's what happens, right? So, yeah, like, even when I speak sometimes, like, bits of Stephen French come out in it because (laughs) he's fucking embedded in me, right? (laughs) Um, Right, yeah, right. So, on Facebook, I seen it years ago. I started doing a piss take of the Sunday sermons, right? I done one, and it, 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 it got more views than any of his Sunday sermons. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I look on Facebook, like, some time later, and this guy's, like, writing on his wall, um, when are you going to start doing a Sunday sermon, Stephen? And he's like, when the troll stops putting his videos on the YouTube. <laughs> and when he said it, I was like, that's got to be me, man. <laughs> like, come on. I'm the only person who's fucking taking the piss out of him that bad. It's, it's funny because I've seen there was a video about him with your man Graham Johnson. Steam's a reformed character. And then I heard a piece of, or read a piece of news that apparently he got out of a car and pistol whipped someone and then threw the gun in the Mersey. Yeah. And then the divers recovered it and he had to go back inside, Thug Mansion. He did. He, he did. He had to go in prison for a few years. And then, um, like what I was saying before, you know, when he was talking about Bimmy Sabble or whatever the name was of made up. Yeah. Um, that really happened. Like, he had an encounter with him when he was six. No way. Um, yeah, yeah, serious. Right. And he was in, like, a young boy's home. And a celebrity guest was coming. And it was it turned out to be him. And Fuck. he tried to... T- he gave him this fucking red fire engine toy. Yeah. And when Stephen French is explaining it, he's like, you give me the red fire engine, yeah, right? And when I close my eyes, I can still hear the bell of the fire engine. So when he gives him the fire engine... He tried to touch him at the same time. Alarm and bells went off. He, he said he grabbed it and smacked it over his head and cut him. Really? And Yeah, on this podcast. And he's like, I brought all my records from when I was a kid in the home and the incident's marked down in there. But you don't see the papers, but like, I'm assuming he's really got the papers there on the podcast yeah, to show yeah, the yeah. guy who's doing it. Um, but yeah, it's fucking mad. The rest of the podcast was shit, but <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. That feeling. Like, but like, you know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure Stevie might. If he gets wind of this podcast, he'd be like, "Those cheeky little fucking soul rags." If I met them, I'd be giving them the full force of me kokoru. But at the end of the day, I, I, he's, it's one of these things where, like, he's just become such a mythical figure that you know people people love him. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like he, he's had a shady well, past, but it's kind of. Do you know what the main thing is? Well, like, um, what I was trying to do is, I used to do like. I used to really practice doing impressions years ago. And what I liked doing instead was getting a bit of an impression of someone and then making it more fun and entertaining. Because yeah. it's not fun if it's just a, a full-on impression. So you can yeah. do Stephen French where it's normal and, you know, he's talking and he's calm and he's thinking. But you'll still say blah, blah, blah. 
But then I like to make it more, you know, and I went down there <laughs> and the demon was letting out and I let out the victory. Yeah, right? And I say, whatever, and move on to the next subject when I need to because I do what I need to and that's the way I do it. Yeah, right? And it's the same with like Danny Dyer. I could have practiced a brilliant Danny Dyer impression, but I like doing it more like, yeah, so I was going down there and they had these chips and I got them from a local chippy and they had the pays with all the guys and all that. It's just funny to do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you you got to exaggerate them though as well. It's, it's like if, you, yeah. if you're drawing like a, a, a cartoon or like a character of someone, you'll over-exaggerate certain exactly. features. Yeah, because like, yeah. I've always like, all, all my life, like I was always, as a kid, and my, my uh, especially my older sister, she was like, I was doing impressions, so, you know, like relatives or, or people. And I was, yeah. I was always, I was always like the, the, the entertainer who who do impressions of people. Did you ever consider getting into acting yourself or, or do any of that kind of anything professionally? Because you've definitely got the chops, man. You know what I mean? And as Guy Ritchie once said about Jason Statham, like Jason Statham was, he, he wasn't a classic or he wasn't a trained actor. It's something you either have or you don't have. Like some people can go to acting school for years and they still wind up doing like QVC adverts. Whereas like, I yeah. think if, if you genuinely have the talent starting off, I think, I think if you have the raw talent, that, that pretty much will push you 75% of the way. I know a lot of it is down to like gatekeepers as well and, and agents who like, they just, you know. Well, I've done like bits of X, like, like a couple of bits of extra work. Like one was for this like student who was finishing like a uni project and he'd done a short movie, which I would, done something in that and then one was this like BBC show what was like daytime shit it was boring yeah. um, and full of fannies <laughs> well I went into like that aspect do you know what I mean that's boring fun. being an extra no one there being yeah. fun um, so but what I'd like to do with the characters like I said is I'm not always going to do like Stephen French but some of the best characters come from you know, people's inspiration when they were younger. Like, David Brent is from his Perthy boss from years ago. Papa Lazarou from The League of Gentlemen <laughs> was, like, a guy who used to fucking, like, always, like, ring the doorbell all the time and ask if, like, Dave was there or something. <laughs> so it's just taking the inspiration from it and then finding a way to, like, depart away from Stephen French. Yeah, because I have a load of characters, man. tax informer. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, the good thing nowadays, you, you, you can get a following just having an iPhone and, and cut things together yourself. And, uh, and, and yeah, I mean, like when you've got people who just have a, a TikTok following or, a, you know, an Instagram or a YouTube channel that is, is getting more views than a lot of primetime television shows that are coming out. And it kind of puts things yeah. into perspective. Even with, like with Hardy Books, like we started off because we knew that we were never going to get a foot in the door in commercial television. So we were like, fuck it, we'll do our own one. And when we did it, we did it unapologetically. And then ended mm. up on TV. But that's a different story. We did as much as humanly possible for those parameters. Like it was, you know, there was a lot of hard language and, and that kind of the kind of thing. But when you when you consider like if you were to make a documentary, why is it that if you have a documentary that's full of like C bombs and all that kind of thing, people would yeah. be like, All right, it's a documentary, it's real, so we'll 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 accept that. But if it's put in based on reality and it's fiction, yeah, it'll piss people off. I think you just have to go with your own good intentions as well, though, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you're not out to offend certain people when you use certain words. Like, the funny thing is, watching the Hardy Books the other day, um, you have to blur certain stuff out, don't you? Uh, yeah. If it's a band, so there was the Confederate flag on the T-shirt. Yeah. Was that blurred? Was that blurred when it first came on Netflix? Oh, yeah, I, I think because that, that Confederate flag, I think because Owen found it in a secondhand store. It was some sort of like grindcore band from Florida. I can't remember <laughs> the name of them, but it was the fact that you couldn't use the logo of the band. Of the band. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. S- same with Chris's jacket. Chris's jacket had like a Ferrari, and it was a, you know it was an uno- it was unofficial merchandise that he got down in a stall one fur day, and he was like, "Oh, look at this Schumacher! It's got like Schumacher on the back of it and the Ferrari." But it, that is un- unofficial merchandise. And even at that, we couldn't show it because it had Brandon. So, like, no we, we got the props department to do an entire Stormtrooper, but using, like, a bucket for a head. And uh, <laughs> it, it was brilliant. It was it was a brilliant, like, replica. <laughs> and then we still couldn't even use the replica because Disney owned the rights to all Lucas films now. And Yeah. Don't want, don't want to fuck with Disney, lads. Yeah. The props department spent, like, five days making this Stormtrooper costume. 
and then we couldn't we had to blur the whole thing out anyway so that was, a, that was stuff like that is, is can be very litigious so there's a lot of these kind of things you've got to watch out for and when you're when you're filming something because it'll end up I mean, costing you fat coin at the end of the day mate fucking hell on Jeff and Disney would get your videos removed if you've done like if I done Mickey Scouse <laughs> Mickey Scouse <laughs> <laughs> Mickey <laughs> Scouse <laughs> Come on, lad. Come for a walk. You know, if, if you're under the radar, you'll get away with it. But if, if like, I mean, we probably could have got away with it as well, but it's just better to be safe than have lawyers doing you. And yeah. uh, when you're up against a monolith organisation like that, they would fucking do you, Paul. Yeah. It's no, not worth uh, squandering that. Was it Norris Green you lived in? So I was, um, it's like the trifecta, okay? I was born in Toxduff. Uh, raised in Norris Green. So were you Went born on, gr- on Grove Street? St- yeah. So that, so that's the trifecta. Um, Grove Street. There is a Grove Street, isn't there? Tox- is it Toxstuff? Or- yeah, there's the women's hospital there, which is... Um, which uh, I was born in the women's. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, and that would have been on the corner of Grove Road. Yeah, man. Do you know what I mean? My me, me sisters used to live there. Skelmersdale, Wigan. Oh, no, where are you? Uh, Skemsdale. Skemsdale. Yeah, I used to work with my uncle when I was a kid out in McGull. In, uh, yeah. And we'd have to come over from... Because uh, I, I was I was born in Arrow Park in, in Wallasey and went to St. Albans and then St. Mary's nice. School. Yeah, you know, it was quite nice. The world, like a lot, a lot of scousers say that world's the posh bit, but there's a couple of shitty parts to it as well. But generally, it was it was quite nice. Really, I can't I can't really complain. Looking back, there was a couple of well, ad lads who talked like they were scousers, but they weren't really scousers. But they just. But did you see? <laughs> well, you, you won't see it unless you fucking buy the echo still, which you probably don't because he's buying the echo. Um, there was a story in it yesterday, and it was, you know, Pontons. Yeah. Right, they got a Pontins in Southport, um, and apparently, like, a group is, of that, is that the one where the tyres used to be? At the, the... I don't know, but it's the one what you should never go to anyway, right? right. And um, yeah, the tagline was something like a group of lads get beat up for being wolves, <laughs> 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 and it was shared like mad, like, everyone was sharing this echo article. And uh, for, for for the audience who like let's say the American audience or, or the Irish oh audience, uh, woolly backs are, are what people would refer to anyone who's outside the city of Liverpool. I mean, like it can be from Merseyside, but you know, yeah. the, the, like what they it, call it's weird, isn't it? It could be Runcorn, it could be South it could be Coast, Wales, could be Wales yeah, as well, yeah, Cheshire. Well. <laughs> because I think I think in the old days they called them woolly backs because. Uh, you know, like let's say the Wirral and places like Cheshire would have been used for agricultural land. So I think yeah. like, I think that's maybe where it comes from. I'm sure there's some scout civvy who fucking calls, you know. Oh, there's definitely. <laughs> that Graham Johnston probably knows the history of Woolly Bucks. Oh, of course he does. <laughs> Woolly Bucks, yeah. See, I read a book about it, and it was a really great selling book. And then there is another book about Stephen French, and every Liverpool gangster documentary, I have to show my fucking face on all of them. Every one of them. <laughs> Who's the dude who was from Powerhouse Gym in Warrington? And he's like this going, you know, I've got daughters like in, you know, I'd love to have them on film, but I can't oh. show them. They like, you know, put bows in your hair and all that. Like, and then if, if you want about the, the, the other tax collector. Yeah, it was it for, uh, a debt collector or something? Yeah, he was like Britain's hard, Britain's hardest bouncer and vice on vice. Yeah, and there's that guy with the big tattoo on his face, and he slaps the shit out of him for no yeah, for selling he, fucking it, juice. You've been tooting barbs, mate. Tooting barbs. <laughs> what, what does tooting barbs even mean? You've been doing barbiturates, like what, sleeping pills. Oh, Britain's Shoot hardest, them. Britain's hardest man. That's another thing. I, I, Phil Mitchell's just come up here when I looked at it, but Britain's, Britain's hardest with Phil Mitchell. Like, uh, why, why is Phil Mitchell deemed as being hard, man? I mean, his is is his body mass index no, is off the it's, charts. It's Grant. It's Grant. Grant and Ross Kemp, he came up to, to Liverpool up to yeah. Norris Green. What if the Norris Green came crew? <laughs> yeah, came up to see the Norris Green crew. See, that's another one where I didn't practice it loads. I just found it where it sounds a little bit like him enough, but it's funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he'd be like, yeah, and uh, my mum let me press the button on the traffic lights that turns the lights from red to amber to green. <laughs> and just... <laughs> it's just so <laughs> 
Uh, your man, the, 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 the Warrington based ad man. Are you yeah. Sean? Sean from Liverpool? Yeah, I've heard of you, mate. Yeah, and he's like, you know, Sean Smith, mate. And I was watching a documentary over here on Swedish TV at the mother in law's yeah. place about a year and a half ago. And, and he'd had like, he, he'd got some documentary made about him where he was doing his own backyard boxing matches and he was putting it on and it was fucking dodgy, man. Like, you can imagine some of the absolute odd nuts. Because the, the weird thing yeah. is about Liverpool, it's a really hard city. Do you know what I mean? It's, a lot of people don't really realise that it's... And even even Wallacey had that culture of like, who's, who's the cock of the school? You know what I mean? It was like, every, it was yeah. a, a lot of fighting. All that shit was like decided in a primary school even. You even yeah. had the cock of the school in primary school when you're fucking 11 years old. Do you know what I mean? Each, each year, like the rankings change. and <laughs> as, Yeah. <laughs> because there was a couple of cocks of the school in, in, in my primary school. And then when we went to St. Mary's and you were joined up with all the other primary schools we went into St. Mary's, yeah. the cocks of the school seemed just, they kind of faded away and made, you know, those lads from Morton. And they had, they had, a, they had a thing called the Leb, which was the Leeso State Bad Boys. This nebulous group of sprayway jacket merchants who'd go around with yeah. like Adidas tracksuits tucked into their socks and all that, and you know, there was Fuck it yeah, there was a, there's, there's a, a couple of rough areas in in the world as well. Apparently, uh, Birkenhead North and, or the Ford Estate is a bit of a, a dodgy well, area. I, I think a lot of these lads as well who were popular with the meme pages uh, from Merseyside are from around the world. And really? Yeah. What, what, yeah. What you see is like. Online, like on Twitter, at least from what I've seen, is like that connection's more stronger now with like the so called Liverpool part and then over the water. Yeah. Like there's not as much like shitty piss taken anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But the internet um, has bridged the divide. <laughs> it has, not. But um, I went to Della Cell in, Cro- in Croxov, but West Derby was another local school to me. And what they used to have was something called. Um, the golly pit, as in like to golly was to spit. Yeah. So the young lads who were like starting school now, like they get thrown in this pit and people just spit on them. That was a fucking, <laughs> that was what people used to do in that school. <laughs> I was like, why? You know what I mean? I remember like you heard about people like getting their heads flushed in toilets and stuff. But... Yeah, there was, man, there was a lot of that. I remember seeing a girl, like the poor girl, she looked like the penguin from Batman. She had really greasy hair and. <laughs> You know, like she was just probably, you know, probably slightly autistic, like, but, you know, made it in, like, she, she did no harm to anyone, like, but yeah. uh, we, were, we were getting on, on the bus back to Liscard when I was, when I was about 11 or 12, and these older kids just all started spitting on this girl on the front of the fucking bus, and obviously, oh, like, me and my mate were, were, you know, these lads were about fucking 15, 16, and I was like 11, so we were like, oh. And yeah. then, and then this this uh, woman on the bus kicked off on them and, and kicked them. She actually kicked them off the bus. But I think these lads were from further on down towards like Seacombe. There's a couple of rough rough shots yeah, down there as well. Lads. Definitely. Yeah. But like, you'd see it. But there was another funny thing that you'd always see. Did you have the swap knot in school? No. What was that? The swap knot. If you had a big, if you had a big, uh, a big uh, knot in your tie, that was called yeah. a swap knot. So, like, you get battered if you had, like, a, a big knot in your tie. So you'd see people, the, the geekiest of people, right, the real nerds, they were the ones with the yes. smallest of, uh, of swap knots. <laughs> it was the geekiest of people and the hardest of people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember people would just go up to you and grab your tie and fucking make it as tight as they could if it was loose. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah, in, in school, I'm like, it'd be that. People would chalk you. Oh, on your, yeah. Yeah. People get razor blades out of um, pencil sharpers and like try and cut people for a laugh. Yeah, there was some mad shit over there. Like, apparently, my two older sisters, uh, my older sister, for a, for a joke once, cut up a load of onions really finely and stuck them into Lisa's blazer pocket. And Lisa was going, oh my "What's the fucking smell of onions?" <laughs> she kept accusing people <laughs> of smell of onions, but she she just put loads of finely chopped onions into her. Yeah, fucking hell. Lunatics. That's a, that's a dangerous game to play in school as well. It's a dangerous just, game. If someone could have smelled them onions, made some stupid nickname. You call Johnny Onion life. Rings for the for the rest <laughs> of your life. <laughs> there was an awful lot of it. I, I remember school in Ireland. There was an awful lot of lads who were called shits at the end of it, like 
Johnny shits, Jerry shits, you know, like yeah. it's just the name shits stuck with people. And that's something in Hardy books where it's like, look, it's fucking Johnny, Johnny shits, man. Johnny shits. But you know, the mad thing when I moved over from, from, uh, from England, which I thought there was some hard cases over there. And then I went to mm. like small town Ireland. It was a fucking different level, man. It was like agricultural yeah. hard men. It was just, yeah, a, it, yeah, it was like lads who were working on, you know, raised on farms. And there was, there was an extra added level of, of lawlessness. And I, well, the first, I think the first week that I started in, in my school in, in Mayo, I seen two fifth year lads just going at it outside this uh, place called TPs, which was, I mean, it was, it was mad because, you know, I, m- I remember like when I was 12, a mate of mine, it was a few days before we leave, and the mate man was like, let's go and see Lee Lawson. He knows a lad who can get weed. And I was like, <laughs> fucking hell, man, weed. These lads are unhinged. But then... <laughs> You go over to Ireland and you just, there's this place called TPs, which is like a youth club across, right directly across from school. It's just lads like this, smoking cigarettes outside. Yeah. And you go in the place, it's just like full of cigarette smoke. And you'd have like the school journal in the back. It was like, don't be bringing drugs into the school. I was like, fucking hell, man, they've got drugs over here. What kind of mad <laughs> shit is this? They had 90s school in Ireland, man. It was, was pretty fucking crazy. Like where, where I went, um, Wayne Rooney was in the air above me. In our school as well. Oh yeah, um, yeah, did you, yeah. Did you so, see him around school? Did you? Yeah, you could always see him. And what was crazy was he. I think he signed for Everton, but he's still at school. So like, there's a lad in your school who's making fifteen grand a week. Like, was he from Highton or Croxteth? Croxteth. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think his older his older cousin Thomas, he was the cock of the school when he really, was yeah. Uh, yeah when he was in year eleven, but. Yeah, I mean, like that school at the time uh, in the late nineties, early two thousands, was always in the paper for shit. And I've googled, you know, when you go, you just think of someone who's like an asshole back in the day. Yeah. And then you Google them, and you know, something's happened with them. Prison, I swear, prison, been shot. Yeah. Bomb, whatever else. Loads of them from my school. Yeah, there's a couple of characters in my school who uh, who basically yeah chose that lifestyle, unfortunately. Um, but you know. The funny thing is, uh, I, speaking of Wayne Rooney, on that no scouts context, there was a picture of Wayne Rooney as a kid. It was like uh, after a hard day's training, he was on this leather couch. Some lad wrote, uh, oh, mate, my nan had a couch like that as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> someone else wrote underneath it, he probably shagged her on it. <laughs> <laughs> what was the story, uh, Kyle, with, with Wayne Rooney that time? He was with the, uh, the, the senior the prostitute. prostitute. Yeah, What was that all about? Um, I, I don't know how senior they were. I don't know if that was like twisted part, but I think there was a place um, on like Everton Valley or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and yeah, he decided to go there. He'd not been a professional footballer for long, and went and like done whatever with a prostitute. Got fucking found out straight away. <laughs> but um, I don't know the full ins and outs of that one, but uh, he seems. He's changed since school, like you know what I mean. I think in school, everyone would a lot of people would say he was a bit of a dickhead, and I think people are still saying now. But I reckon he seems to be a nicer person. Like, yeah, I mean, I I've been that much in the spotlight for years. It's funny, like when you look at footballers, like you know they they they're on the front of FIFA, they're sponsored by Nike, and then a couple yeah. of years later they're playing for like Derby County, and if I you're know. lucky, you get to go and finish your time off in LA Galaxy and. You know, you put out to pasture. Yeah. Like Robbie Keane or Beckham. You know, like there's lads who just go, right, I'm moving to LA and LA Galaxy. Yeah, just have an easy time and I thought. Yeah. Yeah, it's um yeah, it's a it's a funny one because that, that really is like football in Liverpool has a massive culture. You know, it's um Yeah, it's a big club. Yeah. The, especially like World Cups and all that. The yeah, the rivalry as well. How come the rivalry like, like, between like, Everton and Liverpool is so is so bitter? Like, like, is it just is that just like the derby? Because it's like Man City and, and Man United have a really bitter rivalry as well. Well, like because I don't follow football no more, I can give an opinion what's not biased, right? And I think all it is is one team has been better for a long fucking time, a yeah. long time. The other team hasn't, and I I loved Everton as a kid. Do you know what I mean? Through the wins and losses, 
But yeah, Liverpool's just been smashing it for so long that it just must piss Everton fans off. Yeah, especially because Everton were winning like FA Cups and you know, Champions League and, and that kind of thing. And, and then Charity now, Shield. Yeah. <laughs> well, my, they... my football knowledge up to 1995 was all right. Yeah, yeah. He would have had FIFA as well, just to just to keep it in touch. But no. it, it, it's funny because I, I I was up until I was about up until I was twelve, I was a, a real Everton supporter. And then when I moved to Ireland, and I was like, I was like, I might, I might just switch to Liverpool. <laughs> yeah. But in fairness, like I, I've been a Liverpool fan since ninety five. I, 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 I still want Liverpool. I still want Everton to do well. And Tramie. You've got a cut. I think you've got a cut off period, and I think it's eleven years old. <laughs> Do you know what, just before you leave in junior school you can switch then you know what I mean but yeah. if you go to senior school and make that switch earlier on no yeah, there was loads of lads in Ireland they were like United fans and then Leeds did well then he switched to Leeds and then the next season they come in with a Chelsea shirt and then they're back to United yeah. you know, or Liverpool you know, there's, there's people there just were like I'm, I'm supporting this, this team now because they're they're, they're in the yeah, top it's all three. Right to do it. it's, it's all right to do it, but you can't do it between Everton and Liverpool or Everton, Liverpool and Man United. Like yeah. You can't be swapping between them three after a certain age or so, I've been told. <laughs> so so what's, the, what's the crack like in Liverpool these days? How, how is it? Is there anything... I mean, how how has the, the lockdown been? Is it over now? Can you go to pub? You know, is it... You can go to... You can do everything apart from... Go to the gym. Nah, like stupid shit. Like maybe even gyms are open. Because yeah. I think my girlfriend said the other day that gyms are open now. But I'm sure there's still a few like stupid rules. Like we got our um, family dog put down uh, the last like two weeks of lockdown. And Sorry to hear when that, we mate. did, oh, it was horrible. But um, what was it? A, was it a rotty? No, but he was a little workhorse. He's a little <laughs> Jack Russell. Jack, he was like he was like a little black fox. Yeah. Don't know what he was, but he was boss anyway. But we had to take him to the vet and just leave him on the doorstep. Oh man! Uh, and they take him in, and then they give you the dog back in a fucking box. Oh, that's fu- how fucking undignified and, this and cruel. Is, this is man. why the pubs were opening up. Yeah. Everywhere was opening up, and it's like, why can we not do that? Do you know what I mean? Oh, that's um, fucking that, that's shit. So that yeah. is man, because I've I've had to, you know, I, I've personally had to be there to, on two occasions, and it's one of the most painful experiences emotionally you'll go through. Because a dog no, no. is always there, you know. The the you know my dog is he's there on the couch. You know, they, they, <laughs> I had to I had to leave him. It was the day before I was filming in Vikings. I had to I had to leave him in because he'd eaten a fucking tennis ball and got stuck in his guts. So I was like, I hope you're going to be all right by the time I get back. You know, and uh, it was a an, an animal hospital that's open all weekend, so it cost me like fucking five hundred quid. That did expensive yeah. tennis ball. That was. I know. Uh, well, that's the thing. Like, did expensive when l- little things pop up like that, but the worth of them. Like, yeah, you don't. You don't mind. I, I like cats as well. I like. I, I, I like don't mind cats, cats myself. Well. Yeah, I like. I like good. Do you know? I, I've realised that uh, that the, the best cats are a uh, are ginger toms. They're the most chilled. They have yeah. the best temperament, and tabbies are, are good as well. But you, you know the way you get cats who are, who are nice and friendly, and you just yeah. you can pet them. The, the other cats yeah. are just like they take you alleviate. And like my, my sister's cat Ruby is a fucking nutter, man. Like I've still got a scar on the back of my hand from when when she clawed me on the back of the hand there. Uh, no way. During uh, Jules Holland's hoop nanny a couple of years ago, I was like, yeah, fucking <laughs> hell, man. So like she'd come up on your lap, and you'd be. Oh, you'd be sitting there going, "Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in, I'm not into this." And then it's like, "Oh, she well, likes you." And to. yeah, she moves, and you're like, "She's like, eh." But yeah, my my brother in law was was trying to get him out, trying to get, get her from on top of the cupboards to put her out for the night, yeah. trying to trying to get her using the brush. And I'm like, "I'm not sure you're gonna help get her off, get her out like that, Chris." He's like, "Oh, she's fucking mental." <laughs> and then, so my sister just came along with one hand, pulled her down, and put her out. I was like, "Wow, man." Got more more goal than I have. No, at least you can just push a dog off the couch or whatever, and it'll move. Like with a cast, they'll just fucking cling to their life and just sink the fucking nails into you. Yeah, the back ones are the worst because if you can if you can get past the front claws, that they still got like that on your wrist with their back feet. Yeah, especially if you got a little woolly jumper as well. Yeah, f- from Primark. <laughs> oh, from, have you seen um, one of the things on No Context was? 
I think it was on there. They shared a, a, a advert of you know TJ Hughes. Yeah, with Ray, Wayne That's Rooney's shot. brother. Oh, it was it his brother? Oh my god! Yeah, his younger brother. Yeah, just the yeah, is at the most, and it's there. <laughs> yeah, there's a pen. Come down to TJ Hughes's. I get these boss trackies. I remember before I did my confirmation in in uh, 1996. We went over to TJ Hughes and I was like, oh man, I got like Adidas pants, pair of Asics and this, uh, yes. this, this Adidas, uh, you know, fuck it, it was like, a, it was a top, but the, yeah. the thing is it was leaking all this dye off it. So I just had like gray all over me during the confirmation. I was like, what's wrong Fucking with you? People, <laughs> like middle-aged women coming and trying to like wipe me down with like spit and, and tissues. Oh. Yeah, that's that's the funny thing about like because Liverpool is quite materialistic in terms of, uh, or Merseyside was very materialistic in terms of like the, get wearing the right gear. And uh, when I moved over it to Ireland, and no one gave not, a shit. Yeah, no, still is like, like you see lads living in like two bedroom yeah. house, terrace houses, but they're driving a Range Rover yeah, outside. The t- like the savings will be at hundred and fifty quid. Yeah, Air, Air, Air Force One, or, uh, Jordan. Yeah, the uh, fucking one tens. Yeah. Well, if you're going retro, started. go for the '90s. I wouldn't mind getting a pair of '90s. Actually, I wouldn't like. Uh, I think it's I think it's time for me to invest. You should, because they last you for ages and they're proper comfortable as well. Yeah, I might just might just treat really? myself up a nice pair of those old purple and black ones. Be like, yeah, mate. What stoner yeah. lads who play football in school with? Purple Aki's going to love these shoes, mate. So what's the story with Purple Aki, man? Because, like, when I, when, as I was saying earlier on, when I, when I grew up, it was, he, he was a um, mythical creature. I remember going on a scout yeah. or on a beaver or Cubs uh, camping trip and, and we were all talking about Purple Aki stories. And I was like, who is this Purple Aki? And one of them was like, yeah, mate, so, and I was standing in this old church with me mate, yeah. And <laughs> then this purple smoke started rising up <coughs> and behind me, Purple Aki was there and we just fucking liked it. And I was like, sh- looking back, I was like, they just ripped off the end scene from John Carpenter's The Fog. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't believe in him till, up until about five years ago or something when I actually started seeing videos of him online. Because I just say, I thought he was just like the fucking buggy man, you know what I mean? But he's a real guy. I think he's always moving to different cities as well. I don't know if that's anything to do with well, like... What's the story of him going around, you know, getting lads to do push-ups? Because I remember BBC Three had a squats. documentary and doing squats, and then he's, he's, yeah. you know, he's just teenagers, and he, he, you know, he's about six foot five, and he just pins lads into corners and st- squeezes their muscles after them getting a pump well, there's, on. There's two videos, and one, like, it looks like it's in a shopping mall, sort of, and he's, like, pressed against this wall, right? And he's, like, looking around. And there's this guy, and he's talking to him, and he's like, um, what does he say? He says, uh, what's your favourite muscle? And then the guy says, and he goes, uh, how big? How big's your arms? <laughs> so you're in them in action there, but then there's another one where he's on the bus talking to this guy, and he can't fully make out what he's saying, but he's doing the action of, like, <laughs> holding, pulling something, you know what I mean? He's like, yeah, and you did it, did it. So you can see him in action doing it. Yeah, he's always he's really got that um, bag for life. He's oh, got yeah, he's always got it. But that, that the the uh, the reusable uh, heavy duty plastic bag is always like paraphernalia of the of the miscreant or, of or the purple world <laughs> or the, the purple world. world. Yeah, I'm just trying to find this on um, on on Blanco Blackie. This um, haunted Whittle uh, Whittle Cemetery's Phantom Snatcher. Yeah, I'll wait to hear this. Welcome to Haunted Whittle, a feature. Sorry for the intrusion. I accept your cookies. Um, welcome to the Haunted Whittle, a feature series written by a world-famous psychic researcher, Tom Sleeman, for The Globe. In this latest tale, Tom explores the mystery of Wallace's cemetery's phantom snatcher. In November in 1988, police contacted the heads of schools in the Wallace and Woodchurch areas to alert them to a couple of abductors who were travelling around in a car trying to snatch schoolgirls off the streets. There had been an unsuccessful attempt to pull a 13-year-old girl into a car in Woodchurch near November, and a 14-year-old Wallacey girl had almost been dragged into a car close to the Rake Lane entrance of Wallacey Cemetery, but the child managed to struggle free from a would-be abductor and ran off to school. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. There was stories about because obviously my sisters were were, were around that age at the time, and uh, there was a there was a couple of rongans operating in the area. So, but uh, yeah. yeah, but 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 the, back, but the purple Aki mystery thing was uh, apparently it's starting in Wallasey about about that. So, like, I remember, um, like, there was, the main story we used to go around was that he chased the lad. And the lads like tried to run across train tracks and got hit by a train. And that was down in that New, New Brighton, yeah, because his, his sister came out on, on this BBC Three documentary talking about that. Uh, yeah. it, it says here for, the first thing is race hate probe into BBC Three Purple Aki documentary. Uh, it relates to a program about Akinwali Arabihi from Liverpool Arabihi. called The Man Who Squeezes Arabihi, <laughs> The Man Who Squeezes Muscles. Searching for purple Aki. So, uh, yeah, that was... <laughs> here it is. Uh, for anyone who wants to see the documentary done by um, BBC Three a couple of years ago, The Man Who Squeezes Muscles. I think that uh, lad who is, is from Liverpool, the young lad who, who done that, uh, like the presenter on that documentary. Let's see. The, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm looking at this one here by Rob Leary of Medium.com. Muscles and manslaughter, the true story of Purple Aki. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it was outside uh, this guy, uh, a 16-year-old schoolboy noticed he was being followed. A giant of a six of a man, six foot five, muscle-bound, seemed to appear wherever Gary Kelly went. He would wait outside Gary's school, often confronting Gary to ask if he could touch his muscles. Gary yeah. knew who this man was. His reputation preceded him. On June 15, 86, Gary and his friends were escaping the relentless heat in New Brighton's outdoor swimming pool. Closed now, I'll have you know. Uh, got, got fucking smashed up during a storm in 87, I believe. Fucking scumbags. Fucking dirty storms. Um, <laughs> coming in, blowing around, smashing the gaff up, mate. Now it's turning into a Morrison superstore. But they still got RJ's nightclub and does help in a way. Uh, the bogeyman, yeah, I, I can go into it, but it says, there's a picture, six or five inches giant stalks rugby super league stars. Jeez, man, he's been yeah. busy. Uh, but, like, uh, so I was watching this young, this lad from the pool, I don't know who he is, but he's a bodybuilder on another podcast. And um, just when I typed in Pear Blackie on YouTube, as you do. And, as um, you do. He said, uh, he genuinely said, like, he, he, he thrives off the fear he gives everyone. Yeah. And he really is really intelligent and helps a lot of people with, like, law and stuff in prison. Yeah. Uh, I just thought that was a fucking interesting little aspect of... Yeah. What you, you wouldn't expect it, like, when you see him, he doesn't really look all there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Speaking of spooky stuff, what did you think of the passing of the great late Derek Acora? <laughs> <laughs> Have you an well, impression of Derek? <laughs> I haven't got one, but I could I could work one. But I'd, I'd never the seen seance of Michael seen Jackson. Have you seen the video of um, Mary Loves Dick? <laughs> it's so funny, man. He's supposed to be speaking to someone called Mary, and he's like, "I'm getting the saying there, Mary loves Dick." <laughs> but you've got to see it, lad. It's the last little remaining thing he's left of his legacy, and it was a fucking brilliant one. Oh man, he was he, he died at sixty nine, man. Following a short a, illness, six, sixty-nine. Did you say? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it was the beginning of the Corona job. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know. But he, um, he was. Yeah, he, he was. He was a funny bastard, Derek Akora. The uh, did I used you to, to the. Did you ever? Did you watch Phoenix Nights? Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, uh, Do you reckon that to like? Do you taking the piss out of? Do you remember the psychic medium who says, I'm getting the words nonce? Yeah, definitely. I think it was him. Yeah, what, definitely. What, isn't it? what, I, what I loved about, about Derek Accord, you could tell he was just a, like Sorry. a. Yeah, that's fucking people messing me. You're all right, mate. You're the popular lad, man in demand. But what I loved about Derek Accord, the psychic medium, for those who don't know about him, he was, uh, he just seemed like a. He seemed like, oh, well, yeah, you know, um, I met this woman, yeah, and she was making great money out of doing this medium stuff. And, and so I thought, I could do that. And because I've got like a popular presence about me, I could probably go off and get on a TV show. And then every time he'd be on, um, getting a word, Ma- Margaret. Uh, there was no Margaret. And the skeptic were like, there's, there's no records of a Margaret being here. 
Yes, he is. And he had this, uh, he had this uh, medium he would tap into it called Sam. What do you say there, love? Right, yeah? Oh okay. God. All right, ta-ra, mate. All right, bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are the so, most... Yeah, oh, the sad oh. thing, sorry, is um, after the uh, Mary Love's death part, um, they all end up cracking up laughing a few minutes <laughs> later, and then you see, like... That it's all fake, you know what I mean? Yeah. We know it's fake anyway, but yeah. seeing it exposed as fake, you're like, ah, oh, ah, you ruined the illusion. Yeah. yeah, you had me there, Derek. Yeah, did you? Um, did you? There's one thing. I mean, I like I, I've done a podcast. It's up on the Patreon page with my sister, but uh, yeah. it's still I'm I'm still lamenting to put it out or not because there's some fucking spicy content in there. But um, <laughs> she, we were talking about Derek Accor in it, but there was one thing that you've got to check out, which is it's a series me and my dad watched on on one of these like Sky Living or some really like dodgy, ch- you know, low budget as fuck. But it was the yeah. Exorcism of Freddy Star. Oh my god! You have to see that man. It's just I mean you could you could definitely do some. It down. Isn't Freddie Star? He was from Liverpool as well, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Who who are the most famous people from Liverpool around these days? Do you know what? Do you know what the mad thing is? It, it's fucking no celebrities. It's all these kids who have like blown up when someone's made a meme of them. Really? Yeah. So one of the lads is. The let's fucking have it, lad. Have you seen him? Oh. He's like a lad who's just getting like, he's in a fight in at Sefton Park, maybe. And as he gets up, he's like, let's fucking have it. Oh, yeah, he's brilliant, man. His yeah, voice, so he's his... popular. Yeah, oh, come and on. Then, his um, voice is amazing, man. <laughs> it's mad. The whole way through, lad, it's like, yeah, fucking, what are you doing? But um, there's him. Uh, there's a guy called uh, Wagger Dunn. He goes on about Char Su Curry. Have you seen him? What, what was his name? Uh, Wagga Dunn. W-A-G-G-E-R-D-U-N-N. But yeah, he does this like... It's just him at a party where he's like off his cake. <laughs> high on drugs for anyone who doesn't know what that is. And um, he's talking about this char soup curry that he had one time. And it's fucking golden, mate. Ch- char soup curry? But um, for actual... For real famous celebrities... It's probably Stephen Graham. Stephen Graham, you, you, you're yeah, saying no biggest... one's no one's allowed to talk about Stephen Graham anymore. From Stephen Graham from uh, Boardwalk Apparently. Empire, and um, uh, he was in Buried as well, and uh, Lockstock in... and two, uh, a Snatch. He was uh, was he in the Irishman as well. Yeah, of course he played. Um... I haven't seen the Irishman yet, actually. It's good. It's a, it's Apparently, a there's a watch. Yeah, apparently there's a scene where Robert De Niro is kicking the shit out of someone. You can just tell he's... Oh, my God. Oh. It's fucking weird. It's so weird, that scene. Because he, lo- he looks he's like he's old as shit, and he doesn't have the capability of... Did they it's, do- it's just walk. When he walks out, like, his shoulders are all shrugged, and he's hobbling. It looks odd. Yeah. But, yeah, it's worth watching. It's not anything that'll blow you away. But, yeah, Stephen Graham's in it. Now, fair play. Stephen Graham seems to have done very well for himself. Yeah. But yeah, apparently, like he sold his life uh, story to the Sun newspaper, uh, and that's a no, no. Yeah, for doesn't matter what you doesn't matter what you've done in Liverpool. That is like, yeah, you can't do that shit. Yeah, it didn't didn't Jurgen Klopp say something about the Sun? He was like, he was asked a question. He's like, sorry, I can't, I can't answer that. Apparently, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he, he knows, mate. He knows the score. I won't say he knows, lad. Go ahead. Got to get me snooze, mate. Got to get me snooze. How's the vaping yeah. going for you? It's all right. I've been, <laughs> for the, been vaping for about three years. I think you're only supposed to be vaping for a little bit of time. Yeah, my mate Jens was mad into the vaping back in the day, and he um, he, he, he would like sneak off and buy, you know, without without his wife knowing, and he'd be like, "It's a gold plated uh, sub ohm box," and like, he was <laughs> ra- raking up a fortune on all these like coils and and uh, dips and all this, and he had to sell it all off then. No, mine's like a decent price, and all the liquids are getting all a decent price, and it's a standardy 
It's not yeah. one of them big fucking fat ones, you know what I mean? Where someone's got a suck and they're like, yeah. Someone looks like the cooling tower in Sellafield. <laughs> yeah, it just looks silly, lad. Mine's just one of them little discreet ones, like those nappies women wear to not piss themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Tina. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about that today at work. Like the girls like, yeah, you know what? Don't worry about me. I can still have fun tonight. Like, no, you can't. <laughs> You can't just piss yourself and go and have fun. We were talking the other night about the importance of Schwarzenegger movies growing up in Merseyside. There was always like Aliens, <laughs> Predator, Commando, Terminator. Any of that kind of stuff was just... Yeah, all the Van Damme stuff as well. About the effect on Scousers and that, Scouse kids. <clears throat> um, I was named after Kyle Reese. <clears throat> from Terminator well, my name, yeah my name's not Kyle Reese but it's Kyle yeah um, yeah my dad had got the inspiration from that and so a few years later it was like yeah well remember Kyle from Terminator and so that's fucking Terminator 1 and 2 have just been a legendary with me, lads. Yeah, a legendary character to be named after yeah Michael Bean yeah played Hicks see, someone, it? someone put a meme up and it was like never forget that Sarah Connor fell in love with Michael Bean after he stole a homeless person's pants and wore them with no underwear. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favourite films Arnie did is uh, Total Recall, man. There's so many one-liners in it. you got a yeah, lot of nerves showing your face around here, Quaid. Look who's talking. <laughs> Wait, that guy was um, Hank from Breaking Bad as well. Ah, that's right, yeah. What's his name yeah, again? Yeah. Uh, oh, Dean Norris. Dean, not Dean Norris. Norris, yeah, not, that sounds like... Not not a screen. Not not oh not not us from Coronation Street neither. No, not that little wet white. He, he's only a little blurt, that lad. Yeah, mate. I was gonna say that. He's, <laughs> he's a blurt. Blurt was a great word back in the nineties around Liverpool, and it was always used. Tinad O'Leary from Brookside used it all the time. It's like, come here, you blurt. But I didn't know that blurt meant semen. So I would get away with calling people a blurt. Well, I remember as well another one. If you like. When ki- like kids that have like very white blonde hair, you know what I mean? Milky like, Bar very- kids. Yeah. But the other one would be a uh, <coughs> spunk head. Spunk head. That'd be a good nickname. <laughs> so <laughs> like yeah, you look like you got a head full of spunk. There was a lad that who had very little- blonde hair in, in our school called Roger Jago and they used to call him Guinness Head. <laughs> 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 definitely the humour of, of the lads I went to school with, it definitely defined my sense of humour going forward in life. Because I was, I was saying, yeah. I, I had in the notes here earlier on, for example, like the, 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 the syntax of how people form insults over there. I took one, for example, the word bell. That yeah. lot's a fucking bell. But then we took it to total different things, such as like bell end, bell shine, bell boy, bell dinger, bell being, bell ringer, bell brain. Don't blame it on the bell boy. You know, it was just like all the words you can get out of putting the noun Boy. bell. There was one as well, Bell Whiff and Cheesy Bell Whiff. Cheesy now, Bell Whiff? Meant, like, Bell Whiff meant cock, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Bell so Whiff. So it'd be Bell Whiff, Cheesy Bell Whiff. <laughs> Bell Whiff with everything, man. Bell's a fucking great one, man. Because if someone's genuinely just being a tit, to call them a bell end, it's nice, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's, it's, oh, don't even bother, lad, he's a fucking bell end. A knob was a good one. Come out, you fucking knobhead. <laughs> no. Knobhead. Yeah. Still gets thrown about. It does, yeah. Some of them are timeless. I'd like I'd like to catch up with some of my old school friends from there, actually. Have a fucking 25 years later reunion. Yeah, you know, that in the fucking wherever still exists. <laughs> yeah, exactly, wherever still exists. <laughs> it's funny, like, funny the way I look at some of these lads I went to school with, and a lot of them are basically the same as their parents. They got, you got the lads who were in, really into football in school and they're now football coaches and they got kids who look the same as them when they were in yeah. school. I know. But to be fair, like, that's like me as well. Like, my dad is an artist and other stuff as well. But I grew up as an artist as well. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Both creative people and both like to just um, both get pissed off if we can't create. But you know what? That's 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 one of the cruelest things for a, for a creative mind is not being able to have the outlet to 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 to, to, to be creative. You know, that's that's uh, and, that's and why it, I do everything on the phone because I had bad luck with laptops. You know, got one of them stolen because I was in Bootle and that. So I'm yeah. fucking got one, 
And then the Toshiba. other one broke. So we'll just use the um, use the iPhone because it's just better. Though. Yeah, funny you say that because I was actually thinking about doing more videos just on the iPhone and, and using the. Um, it's a bit hard sometimes if you're trying to pinch the timeline of, of slides. It can be a bit. That's fil- the one thing. What's a, fu- a fucking pain in the ass? And um, I've done I've done a video once. It took me ages um, putting all these audio clips all over it and all my vocals on it, and something happened, and it just it just spread them all over the place, and I had to manually get each one and sync uh. them up to the fucking video. Because of the time invested, like, I mean, that's yeah. some some of the things I've done. Like I mean, because like I'd use Final Cut on the on the Mac, but I just yeah, I just don't have the time to sit down. And I mean, sometimes with, with these podcasts, they're like if, if there's some bad audio levels, I'll have to manually chop up like two hours of of conversation, and then oh. like or, or or if you have two different audio, like if I'm using this program, and sometimes the timeline will slip, so you'll cut it and then you try and sync it up, but it'll slip again later on. So you have to yeah, like, yeah. I mean, some, I mean, some people probably just, they have it, they have it set up properly and ready to go from the beginning. Like if you have two people in a room, but a lot of, mo- most of my podcasts are all done like online, obviously with me being over here, yeah. like, but uh, it'd be nice. See, to, I, I'm going to get a laptop soon. Um, but that's what I mean, like as a creator, because I've been have one, it was like, I'll use whatever the fuck I've got next to me, do you know what I mean? So I'll use the phone, but I'm going to get one soon because I want to be able to like just edit more stuff into my videos, because all I can barely do is uh, fucking cut, paste, yeah, and, and, and the, put a voiceover, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and they have that thing, the Ken Burns effect, that's on, where you can... Oh, the but, fucking but you, hell. But you can't, you can't you pinch it full it. size. <laughs> no. And if you forget about it, and then you do your video, and at the end of it, you just see a little photo fucking floating. Like, yeah, shit. <laughs> I'd have, I'd have more. I'd be more inclined to do it on the phone because I spend so much time on the phone anyway. So it's actually it's handier if they just refine the the the, uh, the iMovie Maker on the on the iPhone, for example. Yeah. But there are people out there who are making, you know, they're making really, they're, they're like really big audiences just because they use uh, apps and stuff on the phone. And, yeah. and you know they, they don't even need to like it's it, you know basically it goes down to like how how much tolerance you have for for like finicky little it's like a puzzle you put them together yeah you know you should definitely continue on doing what you're doing on YouTube and I think YouTube is still in my opinion is that it's the best platform because you could be huge on Instagram yeah. and all that but it's like at least if you're doing live videos you can get super chats and all that kind of thing uh, there's one thing about about Instagram I like is the fact that you can just you can do a video and you can have invite people on to talk. Well, you can't really do that on. I mean, there's programs you can do on, yeah. on YouTube, but I still haven't figured them out yet. I know. When I get more followers up, I'll do some live streams as well on uh, Instagram. But I haven't been using Instagram just because Twitter was working quite well for me. And if I'm bouncing between that and Instagram and YouTube, so I end up getting fucking burnt out. Do you know yeah, what well, I mean? Well, that's why I've kind of given it. I've been on Twitter a lot, Eddie Durkin yeah. on Twitter for those of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it's um, yeah. Sometimes Twitter will annoy me because everyone's just arguing about shit, and there's like there's a lot of very easily aggravated people on Twitter, and there's like they 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 can very easily get the wrong end of the stick, and then or you'll see people arguing with other people's replies, thinking it's to them, and then it just turns yeah. into like a fractal of arguments, just spiraling off in different directions all the time. I know. There's certain people, though, you can press mute. If you see people who are always just spreading or chatting shit, you can just press mute and you don't have to delete them or anything. You just don't have to see any of the typical bullshit, you know what I mean? That's a nice little touch. I might do that next time. I was going to wrap it up soon because uh, I don't know how long we've been we've been going on I've this. I've got about five minutes left of battery. <laughs> ah, brilliant. Um, I was going to say, favourite Arnie movie? Terminator 2. Terminator 2, yeah. But no questions, no doubts. What about Predator? Predators, uh, I love Predator, but I like I remember being like six years old and watching Terminator 2 for the first time, and like at that age, mate, it just blew my mind. You know what I mean? Yeah, I actually remember when I was about nine, we were staying over at the uh, at the Cubs, like the this community center where the, we used to go to the, the Cubs meetings on a Friday night, and we all had a sleepover. He took us for a walk down on the prom in New Brighton and then we went back to this community centre where the Cubs was on and they brought McDonald's in and the big treat for us all 
was we got to watch Terminator 2, but we were so rowdy that they were like, you're all going to bed now, you're not watching it. <laughs> and they watched it without us being able to watch it. And I just no remember way. like sneaking like little little bits and pieces of the film going, oh, that sounds brilliant, man. But there was a bit yeah. where the T-1000 had started melting and coming back together. And I was like, what's going on there? I couldn't, yeah, that was couldn't put it into context. Yeah, it's funny. I, I met Axel Rose in 2006 in New York once and we were hanging out with him, like having this late night piss up at this place called Bungalow Ace. And, as uh, you do. As you do. I got a bit, I was getting a bit cheeky after all the free drink I was on. And I said to him, hey, Axel, why is it that in Terminator 2, playing You Could Be Mine on the back of a ghetto blaster on the back of a bike, but it goes into full THX Dolby surround sound. Like It didn't really make sense because one minute it was on the back of a bike and then it was just like full audio. And he goes, "Yeah." He goes, how the fuck am I supposed to know, man? It's just a movie. And he's like, fair enough. <laughs> Uh, yeah. couldn't, <laughs> couldn't resist a bit of trolling. <laughs> yeah, he was, he, he, he was sound, man. It's a shame the fucking... Like, the lad who I was hanging out with, Justin, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have met him. But he also fucked it up. He, he was that kind of guy where he'd get you into these unbelievable situations and then piss all over them and, you know, ruin it. So at one stage, you're like, well, I did that. But the other side was kind of like, cheers for messing that one up. Could have been yeah. Axel Rose's gardener. Come back to Sweden, back to Ireland. Fucking Sweden, be like, I'm Axel Rose's lawnmower man, mate. What are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do about it? <laughs> <laughs> it's me, it's Martin. Me. Axel Rose. <laughs> yeah. Do you want your lawnmower done, Axel? Yeah, <laughs> started to start chopping grass. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get out the game. Where, where? Uh, back to Frenchie before we go. Where is he? Where is he hiding out these days? Is he back in Liverpool? Hiding out. Where's he living? Is he back in Liverpool? Is he? Yeah, give, give my best regards the... to him if you if you if you know anyone. Uh, t- tell him he's very welcome on the podcast. It'd be great to actually get a real Frenchie on. Um, I reckon he's fucking. I think he's over the water somewhere. You know, Birkenhead. Yeah, and you know what? He loves getting on podcasts, mate. He does loves he to come on it? Yeah, that like he likes to add to his little fame and spread his whatever message he's got going at the time. You know what I mean? I'd love to get I'd love to get him on the podcast and Danny Dyer on the podcast as well. So any any of you guys out there who are listening, uh, put the pressure on Danny Dyer and Stephen French about the Hardy Books podcast. Uh, maybe yes. maybe you can jump in as well, Kyle. We'll have like a, yeah, a, as a phone in a triple, <laughs> a triple call, threat match. I'll call him. I'll call him one day. I'll be like, yeah, you know, like Stephen, it's your cousin <laughs> Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a mannish voice. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing about that da- Danny Dyer documentary he had a load of pitties he had about five pit bulls outside oh yeah you can just see the, the bitterness and the jealousy just oozing out of them do you know what I really thought was funny Reaching about up. <laughs> reeking out with them what I thought was hilarious about that was up on the wall it said Frenchie is a grass <laughs> but I love the way they'd written the G it was like Granada tonight <laughs> <laughs> The capital he's next G. to it though, like this. He's like, yeah, look, they've been writing stuff about me, yeah, right? And he's dressed in like a proper young man's tracky with a little cap as well. Yeah, is, is, that, is that the time he's walking around the Liverpool training suit and he's going, I always wear a suit, Danny. Yeah. Subfuge yeah. misdirection to me oldest allies. There's, the, there's a lad who uh, is a regular viewer of of, uh, of the YouTube channel called Graham Russell. I'm going to give Graham Russell a shout because he's, he's a fucking legend, man, and, and he'll really appreciate this podcast. But, uh, Hello, Gray. And Kev Johnston as well. All right, Kev, lad. Kevin fucking Graham, man, you know what I mean? Good lads, like. Good lads, have, good lads. Good lads, good strong lads they are. Merseyside squad. Stay on the straight and narrow, yeah. Stay yeah. on the straight and narrow path, yeah. Follow your intuitions, follow your heart, and let your soul guide you to a higher platform, yeah, right? And, and don't forget <laughs> your kokuru. What is a kokuru? Have you ever looked into the kokuru? No, I just take it as he said, it's his inner heart. You know, he's got two hearts. One of them's the Kokuru. <laughs> Hold on, we'll see what... Uh, I put pictures of Kokuru, and it seems to be some uh, anime thing. Um, master not like anime porn, is it? I don't want the anime porn. It's not good for young lads, though. What is, what is the Kokuru? <laughs> and then we'll wrap up. With this new insight, what is the Kukuru? Let me see. What does Kukuru mean? There we go. Definitions.net. According to them, they say, come on, Chaldean numerology. No, that's not. 
don't know. It doesn't it do, actually? It doesn't give me it's any. Probably, he's, he's probably made it up. <laughs> Maybe he has. <laughs> yeah. You know, I need to find a big word for the end of the show. Kokuru. <laughs> <laughs> what I really loved about that as well, of, of, of the Stevie French Danny Diet encounter, was it was it yeah. was real nineties Merseyside interest. The kickboxing. The, the, yeah. <laughs> the will to crush your enemies. Yeah. Tattoos. Yeah. Tattoos of dragons and. Chinese writing, Do you know, I've got a tattoo on my back of two dragons. One is the good dragon, the other one is the evil dragon. Oh, uh, yeah. The duality of the yin yang, it's the man fighting the, the devil with inside him. You either fight me or you feed me, and it's as simple as that. Exactly. Yeah, that's what yeah. I, I wonder what did he say to, to Danny when he's on the couch? I don't know that, but he, he, he said the shit to Danny with that. He did. Danny was like, yeah. did you ever see the Danny Dyer's uh, one where he goes to Blackpool and he's, he's going up the street and the car drives past and goes, well, Danny! No. <laughs> and l- later on he dresses up, he's got like a blonde wig on and glasses and he's going in. How's this guy from Blackpool? Blackpool? You know, he's, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a bouncer. I'm well known around Blackpool as being a, a you know, tough guy and whatnot. And uh, yeah. did you actually fight so, uh, shag away Liston he's like yeah I did and, <laughs> and we have the footage of him fighting Sugar Way <laughs> well, it wasn't Sugar Way Liston Sugar Way uh, Leonard Rob- Leonard or Robinson yeah it Sugar Leonard, oh yeah it was Robinson Sugar Way Robinson I was handy enough for the boxing and yeah, you know that when, when you know he turned up the heat and he gave me a liver shot and he dropped me very quickly and, uh, and then later on they're, they're sitting in your man's house and they're having a few yeah. glasses of wine you could see your man's a bit too close for comfort to him. He's like, oh, you can stay here for the night, Danny. And Danny's trying to get out of it by going, yeah, but you've got a contract out on your life. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, but it's a contract out on your life. You don't need to worry about it because the contract, the contract <laughs> has been on your life. The top gaze. <laughs> I met him briefly, first series, episode three, out in Ibiza. There's a yeah. quick still of me wearing the horse's collar. Side Danny Dyer, he's like, he's going, Way! Yeah. Yeah. No, I need to watch it again. You'll have to scan through that, yeah. But uh, he was a bit tasty. He was taller than I thought. He's about my height. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was tall. Yeah, I thought he'd be small. Yeah. It's funny because the people you think are going to be big are small and vice versa. Yeah. Fucking Bono's only how five small two. We are in London, man. Even if a far foot tall in London, we'll still kill your whole family. Tell you about it. Is, is Idris Elba tall, is he? Uh, he must be, yeah, he's about six four. Is he? He's a big yeah, unit. He always looked, he always looked tall in the wire and Luther. Yeah, I've only watched yeah. the wire once, and that was about nine years ago. So I have to, I have to, I have to go, I have to rewatch that. But it's just getting the time. Sopranos is another is another brilliant one. Yeah, the, like they're both unbelievable. But once you've seen all the other shows that have come after, when you go back, you realise they're a little bit slow. Compared yeah. to like some of today's TV shows, you know what I mean. Still masterpieces, though. Yeah, uh, Breaking Bad was a brilliant show, and I, you know, I, I was, I, I was one of these lads who just binge watch shows, and then yeah, then I forget about them, and then they come out, and everyone else is talking about them on the radio. I'm like, ah, for, it's like I, I only got to series three of Game of Thrones, so yeah. Um, yeah, so like, you know, I'd be really into it and I'd watch it. I had a couple of auditions for it, so I didn't get them. But um, yeah, I, I I must rewatch it. But then everyone said it, it they should be ending with shite. So I was like, well, fucking just yeah, as well. Only, I didn't invest me time on that. It's only one episode. What shit? But I loved it. But I was watching it when everyone else was, and it became a bit of a heady. You know, just lit because the con- like everywhere you went, like the conversation was just fucking Game of Thrones. Yeah, and where you get yeah. on. It's fucking Game of Thrones all the yeah. time. I was working in, uh, I was working as a music teacher in a school, and this one fucking idiot was like, he'd come in, his, his name, was, he'd be like, "Oh, uh, uh, who's putting on the bets of who dies this weekend in Game of Thrones?" Oh. I was like, oh, gee, you know, it's just fucking. And the people who've read the books, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They've read the books. Yeah, he, he, he's a weird-looking dude, George R. R. Martin, man. Do you know what I mean? It looks like he could be hanging out with fucking Purple Aki and the boys. Yeah. <laughs> Down the weather Come spoons. Out, <laughs> Stop for a drink. Yeah, I'll be for a drink with you. <laughs> I, just, I, I just made up the, uh, 
the voice of Rupert Purple Blackie as well. Yeah, I know. Because I... It's a lot more deeper, his real voice. But what man? He's like, he's, he's dead insecure. He doesn't know what to do. Bad stuff and panics. Yeah, I, I thought that was brilliant. If for, what, what's the name of it's the um, the Stephen French podcast on on the Many Face God? I recommend everyone go and have a listen to that. I was doing a bit of I was doing a few chores around the kitchen here while listening to that man. I was I was fucking I was shaking, laughing. Yeah, big comedy podcast called Pardon My French. You should you should release your podcast up on. Uh, have you got it up on on uh, iTunes yet? No, no. You, I reckon, man, you should you should definitely start doing like the Stephen French podcast with, with, because some some of the the jokes and the gags you have in there are, they're fantastic. It's, and and the way you the way you managed to 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 cross them over like they're having a conversation. Yeah, you, know, you interrupt yourself as you're doing it. It's it's it it just works really well. I, I'd listen to it, mate. Yeah, and, nice I, and, I, and I know a lot of these lads would uh, and ladies would would give it a go. The many faced god on YouTube, and there's some some brilliant yeah, stuff up there. And keep creating because you're 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 a, you're a wealth of talent, and you have to be honest. On, you, <laughs> you too, lad. You too. And it's been a pleasure having you on. After this, I'm like, oh, why didn't I ask that? Fucking hell, you know how it is. Sometimes yeah. my podcasts are a bit like I forget I'm doing a podcast and I just have a chat. But like, yeah, well, that's what they usually are, though, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah, just have a bit of chat in there. Have a little chat. There's there's peaks and troughs, mate. There's peaks and troughs. But you've been an absolute solid guest and and uh, keep in touch. And hopefully, nice I was one, I was supposed to come over and do a few gigs in the UK this year. And, and Liverpool's definitely on it. But when all this shit's done, this has become the theme of all of the episodes. When all this shit's done, I will. I'll get over. Here. Yeah, for uh, about fucking five months. Exactly. And we'll all get a dotty hammer and smack Bill Gates around the back <laughs> of the head. <laughs> Thanks very much for coming on, and uh, please check out Kyle's show, his YouTube channel, The Many Face God, and get him. Are you on Instagram as well? Yeah, uh, under The Many Face God as well. Yeah, all, all and on fucking, Twitter, all platforms. Yeah, I don't bother with Facebook though. Nah, it's it's it's, it's done, isn't it? It's full done, of dirty fucking tits. It's full of demons, mate. <laughs> the demons are on Facebook, and I'll summon them in an instant. <laughs> And for any of you who don't know what we're talking about, check out Danny Dyer's Deadliest Men with uh, Stephen French. It's an absolute masterpiece. Uh, I don't know what the other name of the other one with your man, Graham Johnson, but that's another great one as well. You've got to check that out. Just anything yeah. to do with Stephen French is just yeah. absolute. Or li- Liverpool Gangsters. Actually, do you remember Mersey Blues that was out in 98? Vaguely, yeah. I didn't watch it yet, vaguely. I just remember the name. There was a bit where they were like, we're tracing... A 1995 Nissan Silvia, and then they follow your man, and he comes out and like you're wanted on suspicion of murder, and your man goes murder. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember it. Yeah, that became like I never knew what that was from, but I remember people quoting it for years after it. You know what I mean? Murder, yeah, well, murder. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was uh, Mersey Blues. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see I if that's up there as well. That's a, that's another one, man. So much good stuff to. I'll have to rewatch. Uh, I'll have to see your your second part of Shooters. Yeah, they, I think they they do. They yeah. have it. Nineteen ninety nine Mersey Blues trailer is up there. So ho- hopefully the the full documentary is up there. All right, Sound. as John Lennon International Airport would say, above us only sky. <laughs> that's absolutely nothing to do with anything but just just saying if, if you're going out to speak airport it's now called John Lennon the cashing in yeah. on the legacy you know we spoke about Liverpool for, for nearly two hours and didn't bring up yeah. the Beatles because it's like you know what I'm glad yeah that's why I didn't do you it because it's that's probably, the, yeah, that's probably the first time a scouse has had so much time speaking and the Beatles were brought up you got another hour and a half for the Beatles <laughs> yeah you know for our ring going there one of the funniest fucking things I seen with Ringo Starr a couple of years ago was, I'm warning you with peace and love. Peace and love. Do not send any more fan mail. It will be tossed. Peace and love. Peace and love. <laughs> Peter Serafinowicz, man, we didn't mention him. He's fucking brilliant in terms of, he did that Ringo remembers. He's like, James Bond. Bloody Bond. <laughs> and when they asked me if I could do a song for James Bond, it took 10 years to make. And by the time the song had come out, the film had come and gone. <laughs> <laughs> like me mate was talking the other day about he was um did you watch Alan Partridge? Oh, I loved it, man. Yeah, of course. Do you remember him as Tex? Oh yeah, that's right, he was Tex. Yeah, he was in it, yeah. 
Yeah. Like, you know, there's a load of frosties on your doorstep. Yeah, I've just been <laughs> smashing up your cereal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot he was in the text. The Britain's Strongest Man. That's what he's into. He's like, yeah, they're really like the Britain's Strongest Man and stuff. And uh, he records Britain's Strongest Man over one of Alan Parsons' James Bond videos. Steve Coogan was like a massive Goat. influence. Yeah. Same with me, lad. He's the fucking... You, you, know, you know the way uh, you float with me and the way that... Uh, single uh, middle-aged ladies do. Uh, yeah. Do, do you like me sex-wise? I suppose yeah. so. <laughs> when, he, when he's firing his staff and he goes, well, I told them to celebrate. We couldn't get the Spice Girls, so I told them to go down to the Long Stanton Spice Museum. Spice Museum. <laughs> oh, oh I'm Batman. Oh, Jurassic Park. I could go on about all night. Oh, lady boys. So you're drinking a Bailey's gin and tonic and a pint of bitter. Yes, that's why I said that. Are you bringing your plate, Alan? I've got my nine-inch plates and all you can eat buffet. My peephole Pringle. <laughs> yeah, one of, the, one of the best bits of Alan Partridge for me was when uh, the builders are over and, and uh, he goes, show you the game last night? Which one? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that's, one of the, that's one of them ones you quote a lot throughout life, you know what I mean? Like, because I don't watch the football, I'll always say that to people. See the match line tonight? Don't know. <laughs> Did you see Alpha Papa? I've only seen it once. I loved it. Yeah, it was it was very funny. I think you'll enjoy it even more the uh, the second time. We've lost you. We've lost Kyle. It looks like um, Kyle's uh, phone has gone. Is he coming back? I don't know. But uh, we, we will leave it there on the topic of uh, Alan Partridge. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed this, and it's been a nice little insight into the underbelly, the crime world of Liverpool. And on that note, I will thank you all for listening. Sorry if I rambled on a bit, but that's how I go, mate. It's like a big chat. I will be chatting to you soon. And big thank you to Kyle Cleghorn there for coming on. The Many Face God there on YouTube. Check him out. And any other guests you have, Pop them in to uh, follow me on Twitter, uh, Eddie Durkin, or uh, Maloney101 on Instagram. And if you want to become a patron, by all means, please join the Hardy Books Patreon page. All right, I will let you go, and thanks very much for sticking around. I'll talk to you soon. Have a nice day or night, wherever you are. Good luck and good bless. <laughs>